Hello guys, welcome to Modern Web. In today's video, we will start a new series on this channel where we will build this full stack plugin website using Mon Stack. We will use React.js, Node.js, and Express.js. Along with that, we will use MongoDB as our database. So before we talk any further, let's see the demo of the website. Also, you can download the source code of this project even before I upload all parts of this project on YouTube. For that, you can check description. There you can get the code from Patreon or Pinecoffee of or you can get it by just joining my YouTube channel. So in this series, we will learn to create this blogging website and you can see this blogging website is highly inspired by medium.com. The UI of it is inspired by medium.com. And in the home page, we have a beautiful map bar with a search box, which is of course functional. And on the right side, I have this right link, which will redirect me to the editor's page and a two option to either sign in or sign up. We will see this later. But after that, we have this home tab where I have all the latest blogs that have been published on this uh, site. And at the end, if you see, there is a load more button, which is a pagination we have uh, to create infinite scrolling. So if I click on load more, uh, it will render the blogs that is uh, after this blog and you can see after that blog i have only this blog in my database that's why it's rendered only one so that's the way uh, we have created the pagination here and on the right side i have stories from all interests it's sort of a filter to filter out the blogs for your interest and if i click on programming this should give me programming blog so if i click here you can see it's saying no blog published because we don't have any uh, blocks related to programming in my database right now because since it's a test development uh, website i don't have any real world uh, data right now but if i go to technology you can see i have technology related data blocks here and if i go to travel i will get a travel related blocks if i click again on this same filter it will uh, uncheck the filter and i will get the home page which is the whole latest blocks and on the below i have this trending which uh, shows me the top five trending blog posts so if i click on these blogs it will render me the blog page you can see the blog url got changed and it's a dynamic page i have this blog banner here with the title and the author detail that who wrote this blog uh, with the date on when this blog is written at the end then we have this uh, uh, like button where i can click to like this blog or i can just comment by clicking on this icon or if i want to share this blog i can click on this twitter and it will take me to the twitter page to share this blog and if i scroll you can see in the blog we have a feature to include text and also include images and also the caption for the images and if we go at the very bottom you will see there is a similar blog which gives you similar blocks related to the current blogs you are reading so if i click here it will give me another blog like this and you can see since there is no comment i have this zero counter which means we are counting all the data so let's see the search is working or not first so in order to search let's say you know something and since we don't have any blog related to something i didn't got anything and you can see there is a user related uh, search as well and since we don't have any user with something that's why i didn't got any user but if i say my name which is kunal so you can see there is a user that i can found and if i go and type yeah here tanisha then you can see that there is a user present here with this name and if i search for let's say chat gpt then it will give me a blog related to the chat gpt in store uh, stored in our database where i can click and open the blog and start reading and you can see in this blog i have this option which is a link and this is the mark so we have a lot of uh, latest blog editor feature here so after that we uh, if we click on the right it will give me this uh, login page because i can't write without creating an account and here i have two options either i can log in or if, uh, i can continue with google so if i try to sign in without entering details it will give me this pop-up with the validation so we are doing a uh, pretty much uh, form validations everywhere in this project so you don't have to worry about the data being invalid so 
if you are let's say you are a new user you can go and just join us today and it will take you to the sign up page here you can type your name let's say kunal and here you can type the email let's say kunal at the rate gmail.com and in the password you can type the password and the password uh, would be uh, there is a pattern for this password the pattern is if i type anything and click on sign up you will get an uh, error saying password should be 6 to 20 characters long with at least one numeric one lowercase and one uppercase letter well these are the pattern that we are checking for the password so if i click on this i it will toggle the password so that i can see where i did mistake i made mistake as you can see this is not following the pattern so if i make the password with the pattern with one uppercase letter one small case letter and uh, up to six letters and uh, with one number then the sign up this will create my account and log me in as you can see now i am logged in and here i got a nice user profile image indicating that i am logged in with a notification icon so that i can go to my notifications but we will see these two letters uh, or actually let's uh, see the profile image first so if i click on the profile image you can see i got three uh, settings uh, three options either i can go to profile or i can go to my dashboard where i can manage my blog post or notifications and i can go to my settings as well and if i want to sign out i can click on the sign out to sign out so let's go to my profile page if i click on that it will you will see that this is my profile page where i have this user image which is my image and then the username and which is this dynamic link that you can see and then i have this information related to the user which is how many blogs i have written and how many reads i have total in my blog post and then i have an option to edit my profile because i am logged in but if i come here and go to any blog post and if i click on the username of any blog author it will also give me the profile page but it won't give me the edit profile button because i am not the owner of this account as you can see on this account i am getting all the blogs written by this user as well as the bio of that user with all the social links that the user has entered in their profile with this join the uh, join date but if i go go to my user icon again I can go to the settings where I can change my profile info. Like if I click on upload image, it will give me the option to upload some images. Let's see, uh, do I have any image? Okay, let's see, uh, I want to upload this image. If uh, I can just press open, it will uh, upload this image and I have to click on this upload in order to upload them. And as you can see, this is uh, giving me this uh, very nice uh, alert saying uploaded and as you can see the image got updated here and i can also change my username from here so let say one two three and i have to press this update in order to update the profile if i add let's say bio i can say this is a test profile and you can see as i am typing this character's number is uh, decreasing because we have a limit of 200 characters for the bio and i can add as much social links i want here like i have if i want to add the instagram icon i can say give my instagram url which is https instagram.com slash the modern web and since i only have this field entered in my profile if i update it and go to my profile page you will see i will only get this instagram icon over here where i can click and go to the instagram page and you can see the profile bio and the username is also changed with the image okay so uh, after that we have another thing in the setting and that is change password so if i click on change password you can see well we have a very beautiful sidebar over here which contains settings info like edit profile change password and also it contains blog notification to manage our blogs and notifications and give us an option to write the blog directly from here so first let's uh, see how can i change my password so if i click here i have to add a current password here and then the new password so my current password is kunal1 so if i untoggle it you can see that there is a, this is my current password and if i want to change it to say let's say one to two and uh, for my new password i have to enter the fields like this and if i click on change password it will update my password now if i click it again you will see that i am getting error saying incorrect current password because 
this kunal one is not my first uh, not my current password now my current password is kunal2 which means the password got updated so if i change the password again you will see that this is working now so this is the way i uh, can or user can update their login password okay so now let's see what we have in our file on the editor page i have this blog banner where i can upload the banner of the blog and a input field for the title as well as this area to write my blog so let's make a test blog so if i click on blog banner it will give me option to upload a banner i can select any image and it will upload that image as you can see right here now let's give it a title let's say test blog one let's say test blog one and in the story well i can type anything if i click on this ad you can see i have the option to add text list image heading quotes anything so let's add a heading saying heading one and then let's add a, a list to saying list item one list item two and after that let's upload an image so to upload image what you can do is you can click on this image and you can select what image you want to upload and it will upload it for you and if you don't want to do that you can just drag and drop your image and it will upload that image as well like you can see that this image is uploaded and if i want to add a quote i can click here and click on the quote to add a quote like this is a test quote and you can add a caption like by modern web so this will be your caption so let's say we want to publish this blog then if i click on this publish it will take me to this page where i have a preview section where i can see the blog panel with the blog heading and if i click on this short description i have to type some short description regarding this blog so let's say this is a, a sample short description about this blog and you can see as long as i'm typing here this is updating over here and also the numbers of these characters are updating because we also have a 200 characters limit for this description after that we can use these uh, topic field in order to add text to our uh, blog so that it will be searchable in our home page filter and it will be easy for us to uh, add uh, to view, give the similar blogs related to this so let's say uh, let me add uh, test and technology let me say because uh, i have this as a filter in my home page so i can add it here and i can say let's say uh, travel and if i click on publish it will publish my blog as you can see it is saying publish and now it redirected me to this dashboard where i have the access to this blogs and now here in this blogs dashboard you can see the published blogs where you can see whatever the blogs you have published with the banner heading and the published date and an option to edit it or either delete it and on the right side you will see its uh, activity like how many how many likes it got how many comments it got or how many reads it got right and after that in the draft section you will see what uh, blogs you have in the draft and also this search also works so if i type your test it will uh, give me whatever blogs heading or title uh, matches with this test so since we don't have any draft of course it, it won't give anything but uh, since we have a blog with test uh, as a title if i click on publish blog you will see i have this test blog but if i type let's say test one two three you will see there is no published blog which means this search box is also working and so this is our blog dashboard and to see this modification blog what i will do is i will go to some other blog page as you can see uh, i got this blog over here in the home page as well because this is the latest blog published in our database so uh, other than that let's go to this uh, first blog and in here you can see that i have these two interactions so if i click on this like it will add a like count to it and if i refresh it won't change the number because i have liked it so even if i refresh and access this page it will give me this red icon means that i have already liked this blog and now if i click on this comments it will give me this comments view where i can add comment now you can see there is two comments but i'm only getting this one because the one other is the reply of this so if i click on this one reply it will load me the reply of it as you can see right here and if i want to leave a comment i can uh, say here test comment to test out 
and if i click on comment and it will add a comment over here as you can see and i can also reply to it so if i want to reply to this uh, tanisha messi uh, user i can say hello and i can just say reply and it will add a reply now i can click hide reply to hide it i can click one reply to show the reply i can click the parent hide reply to uh, uh, to hide both of these replies and if i click again on the one reply it will load only the one children and if i click on again it will load this so basically we have a nested comment system over here will and also in the comment card since i have commented this comment i have an option to delete this comment and also the blog author of this blog has access to delete comments of this blog so are you uh, the author can delete any comment from this uh, blog anyway now let's see what is this notification so if i click on the notification i won't see anything because i don't have any notification but if i go to other account which is this author's account as you can see right here well i am not seeing anything here but if i just refresh the website you can see now i am getting this red dot over here because i have notification because on the other end i have liked one blog and added two replies or two comments so if i click over here it will take me to this notification and you will see that before it i had more notifications but since i have already viewed it it is not giving me black border but this is what the latest notification that i have to see that's why it is giving me this black border and here you can see that i am getting what which user is uh, did what so you can see it saying this username user liked this blog which is this the uh, brightest star in the darkest sky blog and if i click over here it will uh, obviously take me to the blog page and you can also uh, filter the notification like this so if i click on like it will give me the like notification if i click on comment it will give me the comment notification and if i click on reply it will give me the reply com uh, comment so as you can see since i have replied uh, from here so if i go back to the blog page and on the comments in the reply and in the reply since i have uh, replied to this thanks message a thanks comment i am getting that to the thanks i have replied hello as you can see that is a uh, i have added hello and if i go to comment you can see that it is saying test comment to the to test out which is the comment that i have made over here which is not any reply but i can reply to it uh, through the notification also so let's say the author want to reply to this comment if the author can click on reply and it can say thanks and it can just say reply and this will add a reply so if i come over here and refresh the page you will see now i got a notification because i got a reply from the author so if i click over here this will say that you got a reply from test com uh, from this author on test comment to test out so if i come back to the uh, blog and if i click over here you will see now i have a one reply here where i can go and see that i got a reply from the author and also i can delete the comments so if i just delete this comment it will delete this as well as the uh, children of those comments so if i just click over here now if i just open my comments uh, i don't i won't see those uh, extra comments so you have seen what project we will be working on this project uses latest tech so you don't need anything more than just a basic knowledge of react to get started with we will discuss everything in detail in this video this is the part one where we will learn to create a use authentication flow where user can log in or sign up using a form and on top of that we will add google authentication in our project to give user more options to log in in order to use the website so before we start make sure you like this video and subscribe the channel if you don't want to miss the next part of it where we will make editor and the blog page so without waiting more let's start the video So to start with video you need to download this github repo in order to start so go to the description and you will find a github link click on that and it will redirect you to this page now here you can click on this code and click on this download zip in order to download this or if you use github cli you can just copy this https code a url and in your vs code terminal or any terminal open the project where you want to start building the project and then just say get clone and press uh, and paste that link and press enter 
and this will clone the repo in your uh, project but before doing that make sure you fork this repo in your account only then you will be able to clone it otherwise you won't be able to clone it so once you clone it just clear it and you will see a mon blogging website folder here which contains two folder one is blogging website and this is the front end phone which will be the react code and this is the server which will uh, be the mongodb or our database well all these files uh, you will find in github will uh, pretty much be empty except some uh, important files like in the server you can see i have this schema folder here inside i have four schemas and these are already filled up for you so you don't have to write your data structure from scratch i have provided you uh, this so we won't be writing the database schema schemas in our website in the video so that will make the things easy for you but we will code our server from scratch that's why this is empty and if i go to my blogging website which is the react you see if there is a tailwind already installed and view it already installed and in the source you will find that all folders and files are structured so you don't have to worry about anything uh, you just uh, have to follow along with me by watching the video and you will get the website on your own you will make your website on your own so once you get this make sure you open these folders separately in vs code and install the libraries like this so if i am right now here let me just go to first medium dot uh, first let me go to mon blogging website and there i have these two uh, uh, folders the one blogging website and the server so let's go inside them individually to install the libraries so first let's go to the blogging website and since i'm here if i type ls you can see i'm getting all the files which means i'm in the blogging website so clear it and just run npm i and press enter and this will install all the necessary libraries that we need in order to make this project and all these libraries is already mentioned in your package.json file so you don't have to worry about it you just have to un run this npm i and it will install all the libraries so once done with this what you can do is you can say npm run dev and by uh, running this command npm run dev you can start your read server which will deliver our react.js frontend so if i click on this local link local host and you can see i am on this web page and if i shrink it down you can see it is saying mon mon blogging website by modern web this is basically what you will get at the boiler template so this is the way you can start your front end server now let's uh, start our back end server so for that just go to again the mon website actually go back from this website and then go to mon blogging website then go to server like this as i'm typing cd server and since you are in server now you can run npm i command to install all the libraries that is important for uh, us to make our server and after that it will be good to go now you can't run npm start command to start the server because we don't have any code inside the server.js file but when we will write the code then we will start our server so you don't have to worry about it and after this uh, much you can continue watching this video and make sure to follow each and every step and if you have any doubt feel free to ask me in the comments open the folder view and go inside source folder and then inside components and you will find a nevbar.component.jsx file this file will contain our nevbar component and we are making nevbar as a component because we will render it on more than one pages so let's uh, let me just quickly write a basic functional component here so type const and give the name of the component i will call it nevbar and then define a function this function will basically just return for right now a simple h1 tag well this h1 is not an html tag this is jsx which looks similar to html if you don't know make sure you understand that this is jsx not an html well 
Anyway, what this h1 should render? I will say just render navbar so that we can be clear that it is our navbar element. And once you have created the navbar component, make sure you always export the component at the end like this export will export it and the default which means we want this navbar function as a default export so that we don't have to use curly brackets in order to import it in other files okay so we don't see any changes here because we haven't render uh, we haven't imported it in app.jsx file in order to render it for that just go to app.jsx file and just remove this h1 and instead that add this arrow bracket and then the name of the function that we want to render which is the navbar and self close this so this will render the navbar so if i save i should see navbar but if you notice i'm not getting a navbar why because you can see this is giving me error because i don't have access to this navbar function so i have to import that here too so for that importing any external functions in the JSX file, what you have to do is type the import keyword and then the name of the function. And since the navbar is a default export, we don't have to wrap it inside this curly bracket. We can just simply type navbar and then from where. So we have to say from keyword and the path of the file, which is components slash navbar dot component. And if I save, I should see navbar. As you can see, I'm getting a navbar, which means it is working pretty much fine. Well, we will set up the roots later. So let's just work on the navbar first. So let me just remove this h1. And instead of rendering the h1 tag, let's render the nav tag. And basically our navbar will have a logo, a search box, and maybe a sign in sign up button or if the user is sign in we want to show the user profile image in order to uh, provide navigation links to the user for that let me first give this navbar a class name of navbar well this navbar is a custom class name that i have created inside this index.css if you go to index.css you will find this navbar and this navbar class is basically a bunch of tailwind css properties that i have given to you don't worry we will write a lot of tailwind but uh, i have a lot of uh, common classes as well in this index.css so that you don't have to write that much of tailwind okay so if i just save it you will see a border at the bottom this is our navbar so let's first make an image for that make an image tag and self close it and then we need the source so use src attribute and to provide the source we can't say dot dot slash images slash the uh, file name because this won't work in order to provide the source we need to import it first for that just go above this const navbar and at the very top of the file just use the import keyword and give a variable name that you want to call the image so i'm just saying logo and then after the from you have to pass the file path and that is dot dot slash which means get out of the folder and then the images slash logo dot png and this will import this image and store it inside this variable so that we can pass it inside this src attribute so in the curly brackets i can say logo and this will access the javascript variable and once saved you can see we are getting somewhat of image but it's too big so we need to style it a bit what we can do is i can give it a class name and i can say flex none because our navbar is having a flex property which is affecting its width and height so if i just save it this should get fixed well it isn't fixed so let's just give a fixed width so let's say width 10 and let's see is work or not yeah you can see it is working great now what we want is whenever we click on this image we want to redirect the user to the home root which is just the slash but uh, for that what we can do is we can wrap this around an anchor tag right and uh, in the href we can just say slash and when we click on this image it will redirect us to this slash root but by doing this 
you will uh, see that whenever you click on the image, the browser reload the page. And the main purpose of using React is not to reload the page, right? For that reason, we won't use anchor tag in our project. Instead, we will use link tag provided by the React router package. For that, just add a link tag. And since I'm getting this recommendation from VS Code, if I just press enter here, you will see it will import it like this. So I don't have to manually import it. Close it like this and just wrap the image inside this link tag. So what this link tag do? Well, this link tag is just the same as the anchor tag, but this link tag does not reload the page. It just mimics the redirection inside our React project. So here I can just say two and in this two, I can give the path where I want to redirect the user. And in just in this case, I want to redirect the user to the home root and just give it a class name. Actually, just remove this classes and give it to the parent. And in the image, just say fit full so it will access the full width. So if I save, you will notice I'm not getting anything. Why? Because in order to use link or any React router property, you have to wrap the app inside a browser router. So if I go in main.jsx, you can see this is our app component, which is our whole entire React project. So we have to wrap this inside a browser router component, which is provided by this uh, React router package, which basically mimics the browser router functionality and act as a wrapper around our app and provide our app the redirection functionality without reloading the page. So what I will do is I will add a browser router above this app, press enter and it will import it. Close it like this and inside the browser router, add this app component and just save it. So if I reload now, you can see I'm getting the image again. And if I click, well, you won't see any change because we don't have any root setup right now, but we will do it later. Okay, so after this image in the nav bar, what we have to create, we need a search box. For that, make a div and let's just give this div an absolute position because in the smaller screens, we want it to be or uh, below this nav bar and we want to show or hide it when we click on the search icon that we will create over somewhere here. So just give it absolute position and give its background to white by saying bg dash white and set its width to full so it will cover the whole width. Set the left property to zero so it will stick to the left and give it stop to full so it will get 100% away from the top, which means it will just get at the very bottom. It will start at the very bottom of the nav bar. Let me just enable my word wrap so that you can see it clearly. So after giving top left, let's just give some margin top, maybe 0 0.5 margin from top and give a border bottom and just give a border gray color to it. So you will see there is a line which is thicker, which is this a div element right here. And after this, inside it, make an input tag and self close this one. And inside it, first add a type, the type will be text. And give it a placeholder, say, search so that it will show search as a placeholder. If I save, I should see a input right here. Now let's give it a class name so we can style it using tailwind. First of all, give fit full so it will cover the whole width. And then in the medium screens or larger screens, set its width to auto so it won't cover the full width. Set its background to gray by giving bg dash gray and add a padding of four from all four directions and especially give a padding left to six and a padding right to a fixed value which will be negative which will be 12% and why we want a 12% padding right because 
on the right side we will have a search icon and in the medium screens just set the padding right to four actually six and give this search box a rounded full class which basically will uh, make the border radius 100 percent and if i save this is how it looks actually let's uh, give a class uh, to placeholder as well so let's style placeholder so type placeholder to select the placeholder state and then just change the text of it to maybe text dark gray and yeah it is looking good now i guess uh, we should have some word of padding right here and here as well for that in this uh, dev which is the parent of this input give uh, padding y4 so it will have four padding from top and bottom and padding x dash 5vw so it will have padding in x direction uh, 5vw from left and right so if i save and refresh actually let me refresh it yeah this is how our search box is looking so after the input what we need is a search icon that we will show here for that what we will use is we will use flat icon so go to flat icon website and this is what you will see make sure you go to interface icons because this is what we are using and in the search you can search for search because that's the icon we want and make sure whatever icon you choose it has this rr search because this is uh, the uh, style that we are going to use in this project so what you have to do is just copy this i tag and paste right here like this and change the class to class name and you will see the search icon here you can use any icon from flat icon in your project and you don't need to set up anything because the installation of flat icon is already done in the github starter template so now let's place this search icon over here for that what style we can add first of all just make it absolute and set its right to 10 percent so it will be in the right side if i save this is where it goes and now in the medium screens set its pointer events to none so we don't want it to be interactive in larger screens or in medium screens and then in the medium screen set its left to 5 so it will be on the left side in the medium screen and set its top to half which means top 50 percent and to make it exactly centered vertically give negative translate y and half so basically this translate dash y dash half is the property that will give a negative 50 percent of translate y to this icon so if i just save it this is how the icon looks i think we should make it little bit bigger for that give a text to excel class which will increase the font size as you can see here font size 20 pixels it's saying 20 pixels is actually a lot so just say xl and yeah now it is looking good and give it a property uh, or actually the class text dark gray which will change the color of the icon and now it is looking good so this is our input box so if i just increase the display size you will see that the search icon changed like this but we want it to go over here instead of here for that let's just add some styles again so what we will do is let's go to our dev which is the parent of our input and the search box and here we will add some styles like first of all we want to remove this border for that we will say on the medium screens set the border to zero and it will remove the border and then we will see in the medium screens set the display to block 
so this will get block and then i will say in the medium snip instead of uh, having absolute position have relative position so it will go back to here right and we need to remove the top and left and right values so for that in the medium screen just set the inset to zero by saying inset dash zero and this will go over here great now in the medium screens what we can add is we can say padding to be zero and you can see that the search icon got uh, here now we have to add uh, some padding to our input box so that it won't overlap with this icon but uh, before that what we will do is we will say in the medium screens set the width to auto so it can cover whatever width it want to cover and then we will see well actually let me just have this right now and then in this input box what we can do is we can add that in the medium screens set the padding left to 12 and if i save this is how our search box is looking in medium and larger screens and in the smaller screens this is how the search box is looking now what we want is we want to toggle this with a search icon over here so let's first create that and then we will toggle it so after this div let me make another div and let's give this div a class flex because this will contain uh, buttons more than one buttons so we want uh, the buttons to come side by side and then say item center so it will align the buttons vertically center add a gap of three and in the medium screen just increase the gap to six and set its margin left to auto so it will always stick on the right side of the navbar great now inside it make a button and this button will basically render an icon so let me go to flat icon again and let me search for search actually this is what we had already yeah so just copy this again and paste it here and change the class to class name and this should render an icon yeah i'm getting it now let's go to button and add a class name where we can add some styles so what we will do is we will say that on the medium screens we want to hide this button and then we will set the text to two axles to increase the font size of the icon actually give this class over here in order to make it work as you can see now the icon is big and uh, set the pg to gray of the button set its width to 12 and height to 12 so it will be a perfect square as you can see right here but we want it to be circle in that case give a rounded full so it will add a border radius of 100 percent like this i guess the font size is too big but before that just add flex and then say item center and content justify center and this will make the button very clear actually change the text to xl and yeah now the button is looking good as you can see very great now what we want is we want to change the uh, visibility of the search box by when we click on this okay so for that we will use states to track the visibility of the search box right so in order to do that before this return at the very start of this snap bar let's create a state so make a const and let's write uh, the state template which is the square bracket and the name of the state and that state name will be search box visibility and then set search box visibility well this search box visibility is the variable that we will use to decide we want to show the search box or not and this set search box visibility is a function that we will 
call whenever we want to change the value of the search box visibility right now just set it equals to use state and this use state is a react function or actually you can say react hook so in order to use it you have to first import it so for that say import in the curly bracket say use state and it will import the use state from the react and inside this use state brackets you can pass the default or the starting value that this variable will hold and by default we want it to be false by default we don't want this search box to be visible right so that's why i'm setting it to be false now what i will do is on this button i will add a on click function so whenever we click on it it will change this set box visibility value for that add a, a on click event and inside the curly brackets just make a function so basically when we click on this button it will run this function and this function will basically call this set search box visibility function and we will just toggle whatever this value is so first of all we have to access the current value of it so we can access it by giving a variable name because this current value is the first parameter that we have inside the search uh, box visibility and since we want to toggle it we can just say exclamation sign and then the current fell which will be this value so if this current value is false the exclamation will change it to true and if this current value is true the exclamation will change this current value to false and will set it here and it will change the state so you won't be able to see any difference because even if i click here it is changing the state but we are not uh, rendering our uh, layout according to the state so to do that what i will do is i will add two classes here which is show and hide what are these two classes well if i go in my index.css file here you will see i have show class which has opacity 100 percent and pointer events auto which means it will interact with the mouse and this hide class well it has opacity zero and pointer events none which means it won't interact with the mouse and it will be hidden and there is a duration 100 which is a for transition so this hide will hide the element and this show will be uh, uh, used to vis make the element visible so we just want to toggle those classes here according to the value of search box visibility so over here just wrap this class names inside curly brackets so that we can use javascript inside it and after this just add plus and before adding plus make sure in the quotes you add space otherwise if we uh, after the plus after the condition evaluation if the answer is show what it will do it will stick it uh, over here like this so this class won't apply and this show class won't apply so make sure you add space then once this concatenate with this string it will be like this with a space in between so the class name will apply right so remove the show because we want to add a condition and what will be that condition well basically first of all add a circle bracket and inside it access search box variable which is state so basically what we want is if search box visibility is true which means we want the search box to be visible if that is true what we want is we want to add a show class but if it is not true which means if it is false in that case i want it to be hidden and that why that's why i will add a hide class here and if you don't know what i am writing well this is tertiary operation this is a single line or you can say a short form for writing if and else so this should give me show or hide class in the element so if i just refresh you can see i am not able to see i'm not getting the search box but if i click on here you can see i'm getting an app, uh, the search box if i click here again it is gone if i click here again it is appearing great but there is a issue if i hide it and if i expand my window you will see the button is gone 
but I'm not able to see, uh, I'm not able to see this search box. Why? Because the state is false. And that's why I'm not able to see it, right? For that, we have to add a, this show class as a by default class here when uh, being over this medium screen. So when we are in the medium screens or larger than that, we will add the show class by default irrespective of this evaluation. So if I go here, I will see a search box. But if I go to smaller screens, I won't see a search box. In order to get the search box, I have to click on the search icon. And if in order to hide it, I have to click on click on it again. Great. Now after the search icon, what we will have in our navbar is a, a button or you can see a link which will redirect the user directly to the editor page where the user can write. So even if the user is not logged in, we will show the right uh, link. So that user click here and we will redirect the user to login so that he can or he or she can directly log in. For that, make a link tag, not this link, link with a capital L, right? This is the React router element. And this basically will redirect, redirect the user to slash editor root, which we have don't have, of course, right now, but we will create it later. And in the class name, what we will do is we will say hidden by default and uh, we will say in the medium screens uh, it will be visible which we can do by giving a flex and add a gap of two and add link well link is again a custom class that is inside the index.css for uh, uh, making a link right so inside this we just want two things first one is uh, the icon and the second is the paragraph so just add a paragraph and say write so this is the text and now we need the icon for that in the search i will say pen let's say i can get it pen or not actually it's not pen it's uh, what it is it's file edit yeah this one so just copy this and paste over here change the class to class name and save it well you won't see it because we have set uh, hidden here so if i go in the medium screen i would be able to see this right so this is what we want to see in the medium and the larger screens okay so after that i need a login or a sign in sign up button so let's create that so make another link tag and give it a class name btn dark and this btn dark is a dark button class which i have inside the index.css file and inside of it just say sign in if i save i should see a button right over here okay let's just give some padding uh, to it uh, let's say py dash 2 which will add uh, two padding from top and bottom that's great and what where we want uh, to redact the user well in the tool just say slash sign in and it whenever you click on the sign in it will redirect you to this slash sign in just copy this and make another element change the sign in to sign up and say the btn dark to light so it will change the color of it and it will create a light button like this and in the to root set it to be sign up but what we want is we don't want the sign up button in the smaller screens so for that what we will do is we will add a hidden class to this sign up link and it will hide this button and we want uh, to show it over the medium screens. so i will say medium colon block so on the medium or larger screens I will be able to see the button. So if I go back to the medium screens, you will be seeing that I have this sign in and sign up buttons. I have this right link. I have this search box and the logo. So we are pretty much done with our nav bar. Now let's just make the sign in and sign up form and let's allow the user to sign in. So 
first we need to set up roots in order to be able to uh, manage our sign in and sign up form separately for that let's just set up our roots right now and then we can move on to the forms so inside the app.jsx file where i'm just running this navbar just remove this navbar and instead of that render roots component of react router and close it like this you can notice that this roots is being imported from react router dom and it's the element or you can say the component provided by this package that we can use to create multiple roots inside this single react application so inside the roots we can use this root component to define the elements uh, to define the path and what elements we want to show on that particular path right but you can see i am getting this red line because i haven't imported it so let me just add a comma and then the name of this root okay so this will take two props the first one is path what path i want this root to be so uh, for now i'm just saying a slash which means the home root and then the second prop it take is element so what sort of element i want to render so right now i have only this navbar component so i will just pass this navbar component over here like this and if i go back and refresh since i am on the home root you won't see anything great so after this i want a sign in and a sign up route for that i will do the same i will create a route component i will self close it and add a path prop and i will say slash sign in and in the element since i don't have the component right now what i will do i will just render the h1 and i will just say sign in page and let me just copy and paste it again and the path will be sign up and it will just return sign up page so you can see i have created these three uh, routes the home route the sign in and the sign up route which is just returning this h1 uh, element so if i refresh the page i am on the home route you will be able to see that i'm only getting this navbar but if i change the route and if i go to sign in you will see i'm not getting the navbar but i am getting the sign in page which is of course makes sense because i'm not returning this navbar inside this route i'm returning this h1 right and uh, if i go to sign up well i'm getting sign up page but i'm not getting this navbar but if you see the demo in this video uh, earlier in this video you uh, notice that in the sign in and sign up uh, routes we were getting this navbar as well because we want the navbar to stay there to uh, create the user navigation easy right so for that what we can do is instead of self closing this route we can close this route like this so by doing thing like this what you can do is instead of creating these paths separately you can create these routes inside this one parent route so what it means is this route is simple a home route and this route well instead of this path i can remove this slash route and this route is meaning the parent path which is the slash and then plus the path that I have mentioned in this route which will be the sign in which will return me slash sign in right well basically this is the same thing like the slash sign in and this slash sign in but the benefit of using this is i will be able to render this navbar and this h1 both at the same time for that so for that reason i am doing it like this so if i go back and refresh well you will see i am getting this navbar but i am not getting the text but why is that this is because if you do this thing like this if you set up your routes like this which we call a nested routes then uh, in order to render this h1 or whatever element you want to render you have to use an outlet component that uh, react router dom provide what this do well if i just go to my navbar component right here 
in this link after this link just add a comma and import outlet this outlet is provided by this react router dome library and this outlet uh, basically means render the nested route element so if if this navbar has this outlet component inside it it will render whatever the meshed route element is but if you don't provide the outlet inside it it will just ignore this h1 and it will work simply it will just return this navbar what do i mean by that you will uh, see when i will add the outlet so just toggle this navbar because we want to add the outlet outside this navbar and self close it like this but it, the react js will give me error because i can't uh, render two components like this i have to wrap them inside one container for that i will just simply add a blank tag like this and then inside of it i will render or paste the navbar code let me just style it like this so you will notice that i have this outlet over here which means that by definition since i have added the outlet i would be able to get the nested route element so if i go back to the page you will see i am getting the sign up page and if i go to sign in you will see i am getting the navbar as well as the sign in page but if i go back to the navbar and just remove this outlet from here and refresh the page you will see there is no sign in or sign up page h1 so that's why you have to uh, add this outlet in order to make this uh, nested route work so since we know that this is how it works our uh, routes are set up for right now so let's just go in the user auth component.jsx file which you can find inside the pages i would say inside the pages yes uh, there is user auth form.pages.jsx and we will create a user auth form over here We will use one component or you can say one functional component to render both of the forms so for that inside this user auth form.page.jsx which you can find inside the page folder make a const and call this function user actually call user auth form and this will basically just right now will return whatever the form we are in so what we will do is we will pass a prop here which will be of type so the prop name is type and we will pass this type inside our app.jsx to render the user form that we want according to the route so to see that it's working or not we are just returning the h1 with this type just for now and make sure you export it as well like this great so now let's go to a uh, app.jsx file and instead of rendering this h1 now you can remove it and instead you can render user auth forms and self close it like this make sure you import it on the top as well just copy this and instead of returning the h1 for the sign up route return this user auth form again so if i just save you won't see anything because we haven't passed the type prop value so for that in the sign up path i'm saying type equal uh, sign dash in and in the sign up form i'm saying type equal sign dash up so if i save and see in the right side you can see i am getting sign in if i just expand this window and go to the sign up which is this button where it is redirecting me you will see i am getting sign up if i say sign in i am getting sign in if i go to sign up i am getting sign up which is which means that our single user auth form is working for both sign in as well as sign up so now let's uh, make the forms so instead of rendering these simple h1 let's make the form so for that make a section and this section will contain the form and the inputs so give it a class name and say h cover 
well h dash cover is a custom class name defined in the index.css file that i have provided and this is basically just setting the full height subtracting the height of the navbar which is 80 pixels so it is like 100 vh of height negative 80 pixels right so after this edge cover give it a flex so that we can align or we can make the form in perfectly center say it's uh, items to center so it will be vertically centered and then say justify dash center so it will be centered horizontally let me enable my word wrap okay now uh, let's render a form and this form let's give it a class name say width to be 80 percent inside the square brackets and let's say max width to somewhat around 400 pixels so we don't want our form to be more than that and yeah right now we just want these classes after that make an h1 and this will basically uh, render the type of the form so i will just say type and you will be able to see the sign up right here now we want it to be look bigger and we want some more style to it so so add a class name to h1 and let's say text dash 4 excel to make it a little bit bigger or actually a lot bigger like this and set its font to font Galaxio, which is a second font that we will use in our website it looks something like this and say capitalize to make first letter capital and add text center to make the text in the center and let's give a margin bottom of 24 so it will have a six frame of margin bottom like this but we don't want this dash in our heading right so instead of that what we'll do and actually uh, we don't want our form to display this sign up we want to display welcome back if uh, they are in the signing page and or uh, join us today if they are in the uh, sign up form so instead of rendering this type what we can do is we can check whether we are in sign in or sign up by saying type double equals to sign in which means we are checking whether we are in the sign in or not so if the type is sign in we will render welcome back but if the type is not sign in then we will render join us today let me correct it like this and yeah since we are in the sign up route i am getting this sign uh, join us today but if i go to sign in by clicking on this button i'm getting the welcome back if i expand it and go to sign up i will get join us today so the heading is working fine so after the heading let's make the input so the first inf input we want is a full name text box for us uh, for our sign up page for that first of all we want our uh, full name input to be only visible when we are on the sign up page instead of not uh, instead of sign in page so for that check for the sign up page so you can say if type is not equals to which is exclamation then equal and inside it you can say sign in so if the type is not equals to sign in which means it will be sign up in that case we will render input input box otherwise we won't render anything great but in uh, the forms in the form we won't be uh, creating the uh, the text field with this input tab what we will do is we will going to create a custom input box component and we will create the input box using this custom input box component so let's just create this input box component and then we will render it here so let me just remove it and uh, in the components you will see uh, input.component.jsx which is this file and here what we will do is we will just make a input box component which will basically return right now 
h1 saying input box go input box and we will export it as a default function input box and now let's just import this input box over here to render when we uh, when this condition satisfy so as you can see here i am getting this input box which means i am able to render this input box which is great but if i uh, go to my sign in i won't see that input box because this condition will only apply if i am on the sign up which i will go by clicking on this button great so now let's create that input box uh, component so that we can create same style uh, inputs everywhere so instead of rendering the h1 what we will do is we will render a div and this div will have a class name a uh, relative it will be head of relative position set its fit to a uh, hundred percent and give a margin bottom of four so it will have a bottom four margin and then make an input well this input name will going to be of name prop that we will provide while creating this input box so while creating this input box what uh, sort of props we need we need name then we need type of the input then we need id if in case we need and then we need a, a value which will be a default value if i want to provide any default value for the input then uh, we need a placeholder that we are, what we want to show on the input and well this is just for now so i can here in the name i can pass the name no comma needed i can uh, pass the type prop in the type and uh, in the placeholder i can say placeholder and in the value well actually to set the default value in or uh, instead of uh, saying value like this you have to use default value this is uh, this default value is a react.js property that's let uh, that let you set a default value to the input if you just use the value it won't set so make sure you use default value and we will provide a uh, this value prop over here and to give a id we will just say id equal this id prop so basically this input box will take these sort of props it will take name type id value placeholder and then we are just rendering this div inside this div we are rendering this input with all those name type placeholder default values and the id now we want to add some styles right so for that add a class name and before adding class name we want to see our uh, input over here for that let's go back here and let's pass some props value over here let's say it's a name to be full name because this is a full name input box then the type will be text and the placeholder will be full name so if i save you will see a full name input box over here so now let's style it inside this input component well in the class name just pass input box and this input dash box is a class that i have inside the index.css so this will apply all the class that we need for our input box as you can see over here now in the design you will uh, you already know that in the input box we want an icon over here to support our input box for that uh, we need a sort of icon so after this input tag what we will do is we will create an icon and for that what i will do is i will just for now search for a user to get one icon let's just get this one let me just copy it and paste right here change the class to class name and if i save well you can see the icon over here right so let me just add a class to it so uh, let me just say 
input dash icon this is again inside our index.css file so this will apply the classes and i will be able to see the icon over here but by giving the icon like this i won't be able to create multiple inputs why because if i just copy this and after this condition if i paste and if i say now i want an input box for email and if i save well of course i will get a email text box but i won't be able to set this uh, icon right for that what we will do is we will create this icon dynamic for that what we can do is uh, we can first wrap our class name like this and then if you notice the class is follow like fi which is flat icon and then the name of the icon like this so what we can do is we can provide the name of the icon in our input box prop and then we can add that over here so in uh, we can remove this fi user class and we can add quotes here and we can add quotes over here in the input icon and make sure you add space over here otherwise it will merge it with uh, the class that we will uh, concatenate right now here i will just pass input or actually the icon so this icon will be a prop for this input box and we will provide this icon from here and then that icon is going to be like this class and we will provide it from this input box whenever we will create it and then it will add the class name over here so it will uh, render the icon dynamically what i mean is if i just go here and after the placeholder if i go in the icon and just copy this fi dash rr dash user class and just pass this class inside this icon and save you will able to see this user icon great let me just change the uh, placeholder to be like uh, this great so i guess we are done with it so now let's uh, create our email so copy this and after this condition paste it and in the name change it to email the type will be email placeholder will be email as well and the icon well let's search for it so let's search email over here and i will use this at the rate icon so just copy this fi sr dash at well actually you can select here the rr version which is this one so copy this class and instead of this fi rr user paste this and save it and you will be able to see this at the rate email actually instead of using at the rate let's just use uh, the mailing one so let me copy this envelope cl uh, class and paste over here and this should render an envelope icon great so after the full name and email the second thing i want the third thing is the password so just copy this and paste it over here change the name to password the type will be password the placeholder would be password and the icon well for that i will use a key i guess and let's just get this rr key and instead of this envelope paste that and save it and you will see a key now if i type here anything this is my password if i type here anything this is my email if i type here anything this is my full name now one more thing that we need in our input box is if the input box is password we want to show a toggle icon here where we can click and we can see the password written over here and we can hide it for that we will uh, code that functionality inside our input box component so after this i icon or i tag let's just add a condition here inside the curly bracket saying if the type is equal equals to password which means if the input type is password 
In that case, we will render the eye icon. Otherwise, we won't render anything. So inside this, let's render the eye icon. So for that, just go to flat icon and search for eye. And let's get this one. Find the RR version of it right here. Just copy it and paste it like this change the class to class name save it and if this is a password you can see i'm getting this i icon over here so now let's add some class name to style it so the first class name that you can add is the input icon so it will align this or the, this icon over here but we want it to be on the right side for that you can set its left to auto let me enable the word wrap and after that you can set its right to four so it will come four away from right as you can see like this after that let's just change the cursor to pointer as well so whenever you take your mouse over here it will change to a cursor great now we want to toggle the uh, type of this password because currently this is password and we want the, uh, to toggle the password type to text in order to see the password for that again we will use use states for that so just to uh, make here a const and then make a variable over here let's just call it password visible and let's uh, call the function name to be set password visible set it's equals to use state and set the default value to be false and make sure you import the use state at the top so add import curly brackets use state from react so basically this password visible is by default going to be false which means we don't want to show the password at the beginning right but whenever we click on this i icon we want to show the password for that we can add a on click event to it so you can say on click equal when we click on it run a function and that function will basically call this set password visible function and first of all we want the current value so we can access it like this the first parameter is the current value and then we can return the reverse of that by saying exclamation and then the current value so if this is true it will return false and if it is false it will return true so if i save it this should work but you don't see anything well it is changing the state but again the state is not affecting this input box in any way right so to change the type what we can do is inside the input instead of just setting the type let's add a condition here saying if type is equal equals to password if the type is equals to password in that case what we want is we want to check whether the password is visible or not so we will say if password is visible so if the type is password if the type is equals to password we will check the password is visible or not if the password is visible we will set the type to text if the password is not visible we will set the type to password and and instead of this question mark add a colon which means if this is not a password then we will just give a simple type to this type so if i just save well actually you have to give question mark over here and colon over here and this condition should look like this this basically means type is equals to password then we will check the password visible if that is true also then we will set the password uh, the type of the input to text but if it is not visible we will set the type to password but again if the initial type of the input is not the password well then we don't need to check for visibility or anything like that so you can see i'm able to see the password I can click here this will hide it I can click over here this will show it I can type anything again I can hide it again I can show it now you can see the icon we want the icon to toggle as well 
uh, from this crossed to uh, this sort of not crossed icon so if you see the class name over here you will see the class name for this one is fi dash rr dash i but if you see this one this class name is fi dash rr dash i and then this dash crossed as well so we can toggle this dash cross class to toggle this icon using condition like this so over here just add curly bracket so that we can use javascript to set the class name and uh, after this i do not give any space and add quotation mark to separate this with this and add a quotation mark here as well to separate these so we will be separating these three classes like this so this crossed is cut out from this class and this string as well now we want to add this whenever this password visible is false for that what we will do is we will add a condition over here and uh, we will say if the type is equal equals to or actually don't go to for type and say if the password visible so if password is visible in that case we will not render this cross so you can say exclamation here so it will check for if the password is not visible in that case we will return this cross class otherwise we won't return anything so make sure you add condition like this where the password is not visible then only you are returning this cross class so if i save it now i should get a icon well, I'm not getting it because I don't have space over here or over here. So make sure you add space before this input icon. Otherwise, this class won't work. And now you can see I'm getting an icon with a cross. But if I click here, the icon got changed and I'm able to see the text over here. I can type any password here. And if I click here, it will toggle it. And if I click it again, it will toggle it again. So with this, our full name, email and password input box are done. So now let's make the next thing in our user auth form, which is the sign in or sign up button, which will be the action button. So for that, make a button and give this button a class name say it's btn dark and just say center so it will uh, get in center and again the center is a custom class uh, inside index.css and set its empty which is margin top to 14 so it will have a 14 units of margin top and in the button uh, what we want is we want to uh, say either sign in or sign up so what we will do is we will just uh, render the type right now and you will see sign up like this great now what we want is that this sign up uh, uh, we want this sign up without this dash for that what we can do is we can add dot replace to replace anything uh, from the string and what we want to replace we want to replace the dash and from what we want to replace we want to replace the dash with a single space so this replace function basically replace a character from the string and add the uh, character that you give in the second argument instead of that character mentioned in the first argument so if i save it you won't be able to see the dash and it is just sign up so this is how our form is looking and it is looking pretty much good now after this add a type submit so then when we click on it it will submit the form right and now let's create a div and let's give this a class relative with a width full and items center 
uh, this div will contain the or separator so we want it to be a full width with a flex box and we want the item to be centered so that the uh, children of it will be vertically centered add cap of 2 and uh, set the margin y to be 10 so it will have a top and bottom margin of 10 units set the opacity to 10 as well and say it uppercase so whatever text we write inside it it will be of uppercase set the color to text black so or the text color will be black and change the font width to bold so it will be a bold font inside it we will create an hr which will be the line just self close it and give it a class name width half which will be like 50 percent of width and say its border to be black make another copy of it and if i save you can see i am able uh, to get this to hr like a separator and between these two i will just uh, render a paragraph with or text in it and i will be able to get a or separator great after this step i want a continue with google button so for that make a button and just type here continue with google if i save i will be able to get a button with continue with google make sure you add a class name pt and dark so that we can get the button classes here great i want to add a google icon in front of this continue with google as well for that i will just render an image here and in the src i will provide google icon so i will just say google icon over here and then i have to import it at the top so i will import it like this import google icon from and the path of the icon is images slash google.png so it will import the google icon and paste it over here as you can see the image right here great uh, we need to give some styles to it right so first of all the image uh, give it a class name and set its width to 5 so it will be of width 5 like this now we want the image and the text to be side by side for that we will need to use uh, the flex mouse so add a flex class to the button and then say item center so uh, it will align this image and the text vertically centered and then uh, give justify justify center so it will align the image and the text in the center and give it a gap of 4 set its width to 90 percent and give a center class so it will be in the center and this is how it looks so with this our continue with google is also done of course we will make it functional later on so but we are doing uh, the ui part now so we will just leave it like this so after this we need a link to uh, redirect the user to sign in or sign up page so like if uh, uh, the user isn't join us today but uh, he already has an account he can just click on that link to go to the sign in page to log in with the account right so for that we need to create a link so we will add a condition here because we have to render different link for different state or the different type for that i will add a condition here saying type is equal equals to sign and a dash in so if the type is sign in which means the form uh, the user is in is a sign in form in that case it will render a p tag and that p tag will have a uh, will basically just render don't have an account with a question mark and then it will render a link and this link and this link will basically redirect the user to slash sign up page right sign up like this 
and let's give it a class name underline because we want we want this uh, link to be underlined and the text will be black in color and the text size will be xl and the margin left will be one so it will have a one unit of margin left and in the paragraph give a class name margin top six text will be dark gray so it won't be same as the link color dark gray and then the text size will be xl and the text will be in center so we can just say text center but you can see it is giving me error because this is the uh, thing that the react have to uh, render when this condition is true but we haven't provided the thing that react has to render when this condition is false right so for that add a colon and just simply copy this because we actually have to return this but instead of this we will return already already a member with a question mark and in this link I'm um, well inside the link of course I have to uh, pass the text name uh, the text so I will say sign in here and in this link I will say join us us today and I will save it well this is not working because I have to import the link element as well and if I save you can see since I am on the sign up page I am getting already a member sign in here if I click over here well this is not rewriting because I haven't changed the link to property so I have to say link uh, the link will be sign in so if i click over here now this will take me to the welcome back which is the sign in page and over here i'm getting don't have an account join us today if i click over here it will take me to the sign up page so with this our sign in and sign up form ui is done but uh, you can see when i'm clicking on the link this is how i'm getting the element it's an instant but uh, what I want is I want uh, some sort of animation when we uh, go through the pages. Yeah. So these are two different pages, but we are not seeing any animations because we haven't created any. So let's create an animation so that we can get a smooth fade in and fade out effect while transitioning to the pages. So to create animation what we will going to do is uh, we will create a component called animation wrapper inside our page animation.jsx that you can find under common folder so let's just make a function component and let's call it animation wrapper and this function will basically return a div and inside of div we will render whatever children we will pass while creating this animation wrapper component so i will just say render whatever children you have whenever we will render this so to access children what you have to do is you have to make a children prop as well here so when once you have a children prop whenever you will wrap uh, this around any element that will become this animation wrappers children and that will get rendered inside it and at the end just export this animation wrapper as a default so if i save and go here and just above this section add the animation wrapper like this and close it like this i can then just shift this section inside this animation wrapper so basically what i'm doing is i am wrapping my whole form section inside this animation wrapper and this animation wrapper component will just create a dev around this section and it will render it so whatever animation properties or animation uh, library we will use we will do all that stuff inside this animation wrapper 
and uh, to make the animation consistent in all the pages wherever we want animation we will wrap those components with this animation wrapper and it will create that animation so that we can just then just we uh, we have to just change the animation in this animation wrapper and it will change the whole website pages animation so i hope uh, you know now why i have created this animation wrapper as a separate to create animations well so coming on to this page animation to create animation we will going to use a library called framer motion well framer motion is a library that uh, helps you create animation inside react js so we will going to use that and in the package.json i have already installed that so you don't have to worry about it so we need to import some components or functions from framer motion in order to use it so add a import here and inside the curly bracket we will import two things the first will we will import is animate presence and the second we will import is motion so basically this motion component from this framer motion allows you to create any component as a motion component and then you can use framer motion properties to create animation or to make that component animatable great so uh, to change this div into motion div or like uh, to add animation to this div what we have to do is we have to add motion dot in the beginning and this will create this div as a motion div component from the framer motion so make sure you close it like this and now since I have added motion dot in the beginning, I can use framer motion properties to create animations inside this animation uh, motion div. So what sort of properties we can give? The first property we can give is initial. And this initial just tells what the initial state of this element is going to be. So here I will just pass a initial prop and I will declare the initial prop right over here. So what I'm doing is I am creating this initial as a prop so that if I want any custom animation, I can provide it while creating this animation wrapper. But if I don't want any custom animation, I can give it a default value so that that value get inside it. So we don't have to uh, add or provide initial every time we uh, create this animation wrapper. So the default uh, value of this initial prop will be an object with the opacity key and the value will be zero so basically the initial will be opacity zero which means it will have a zero opacity which will means it won't be uh, visible right then afterwards we have another property called animate and this animate is like what is the final state of this element going to be and here i can say animate and i can again declare this animate as another prop and I can give a default object to it. So let me first enable my word wrap so that you can see. And the default animate uh, object will be opacity with one. So I want the initial state to be opacity zero, which means the element should be hidden. And then the animate or the final state to be opacity one, which means it will fade in Great. So since I have initial and animate and uh, since I have wrapped it uh, around the section I should see animation so if I save it and refresh you can see something is appearing it is a fade in effect but we are uh, it is very fast so to add a transition to it like to add or change the duration of it what we can do is we can provide a transition property and inside it again I will pass transition prop and I will create that prop here and this transition prop will have a default object with a duration inside of it and that duration will be around 0 0.5 so if I save it I should see animation with 0 0.5 let me just change it to 1 As you can see there is a fade in effect going on if I change it to 2 and if I refresh you can see there is a fade in effect like this 
so basically the animation is working so i can change it to one because i think the one duration is good but if i click over here join us today and the sign in here you will see there is no animation we are only getting the animation at the start of the page but when i'm going to sign up page or coming to sign in page it's not giving me the animation and this is because uh, we are using user auth form which is a single component for both of our sections so the framer motion or you can say this motion element that has no way to tell the difference between the sign in and the sign up because they both uh, are user auth form they don't have anything different to keep track of it so in order to differentiate the form so that this motion dev can understand we can pass another property which is key and this key will define or will uh, make this div different from another div and what this key would be i will just say it to be key value and this will be another prop that i will declare here key value and i can give this key value while creating this animation wrapper like here key value and i can pass type inside of it so the type will be of course different for both forms one will be signing and the other will be sign up and since the key value or the key will be different for both of these sections irrespective of the same component our motion dev will be able to differentiate the forms thus it will apply or show the animation so if i click on join us today i should see a fade in effect if i click here you can see i got a fade in effect if i click here again i'm getting the form with a fade in effect well that's great now another thing i want to do is i want to add a class name to it because maybe in other part of the code uh, we want some styles to add up here then we can use this class name property to add classes here so for that reason i am adding this class name prop as well so now if i go and click join us today and sign in here well it's working fine now if you say what is this animate presence well this animate presence it will keep track of this motion dev so it gives us a power uh, to control the animation so well this won't do anything but uh, it's good that you can it's good to wrap your motion around this animate presence so that it will keep track the of the motion dev and it will keep track of the motion animations so if i go here and click on this well this since the home page has no content i will see nothing here but if i click on sign in i will get a fade in effect if i click on join us today i will get a fade in effect with the join us form clicking on sign in here i will get a sign in here form well that's it so this is our page animation so now let's work on our server and make this form functional so that user can log in or create his or her account okay so let's start working on our server.js file and let's create our server so make sure you are inside this server folder and you have this server.js file open so first of all we will import the express.js and then we will set up our server using express so add a import and import the express from express and this will import the express function now make a variable let's call it server or you can call it app or whatever you want and just call this express function that you have imported and it will store all the functionality of express inside the server so that we can access the express functionality using this server so the first thing i want is i want to start the server so to start a server we want to listen on some port while developing on the local host so for that you can say server dot listen and it will start listening and make sure this express spelling is correct yeah so add server dot listen and this will start listening so i have to give a port number here uh, where i want to listen for the request so i will create a variable here i will call let port equal 3000 so i am setting port number to 3000 you can set any port number here and just pass that port number here 
so i will uh, our server will start listening on this port number so whatever we uh, request we will make to this port it will respond to that uh, request and once we start listening on that port you can add a second argument to it or you can pass second parameter which is a callback and inside it i'm just simply console logging that listening on port and then the port number so this is a basic server of expressjs so if i just open my terminal and run npm start command i should see a console log you can see it's saying listening on port 3000 which means our server is started on port 3000 so now what i want is i want to connect my mongo database to it as well and then i will start listening on my uh, routes so to connect database or uh, which is the mongo database what you have to do is first import mongoose from obviously mongoose and this mongoose library will allow you to access uh, the uh, mongo tv from this node.js file so for that what you can do is say mongoose dot connect and this mongoose dot connect function will uh, you can use to connect to your database now we don't have our database currently so let's go and create our database and then we will connect it to the mongo uh, our server so for that go to mongodb.com and you should see something like this just go to sign in and you can sign in with google github or uh, email address if you have so once you are logged in in your mongodb if you have no projects it will directly uh, give you an option to create a cluster and if you are uh, working with mongodb with lots of projects you will see your recent project open so just go over here and then click on new project to create a new project and just provide a name to it i will call it react js blogging website yt and i will click next since i don't want to add any members or anything like that i will just create click on create project and it will create the project for me so after done with that we need to create a database so go under this deployment and then this database and once the page is open you can click on this build a database button to create a new database here I will select the free version because we want it for development mode and you can select any provider here I am selecting the AWS and then in the region select whatever region is nearer to your location so it will be a fast uh, fast response so I am selecting my location which is Mumbai and then you can click uh, give any name here I am saying VHS blogging website yt and after that just click on create and it will create the database so after it's done creating the database it will redirect you to the security quick start where you can set up a username and a password for your database and basically you will need this username and password whenever you try to access the database so over here you can change the username if you want or you can uh, let it this one and in the password you can leave this like this or you can change or give the password that you want or you can just create a uh, click on auto generate to create more secure passwords but make sure that if you auto generate the secure password you are you can only access the password one time like this so make sure you copy this password and uh, paste it somewhere because we need it afterwards in order to access the database so just click on create user and it will create the user but uh, suppose if you have clicked on create user and you haven't pasted the password anywhere then in that case you can click on this edit and this will take back to you on the new password uh, section where you can click on auto generate to create another password and make sure you copy this one before updating it and click on update to update the password.
and just paste the recent password in the .env because we need it while uh, setting up this db location url so once you have this uh, uh, user and the password the second thing we want to change is the ip address we have to add our current ip address here in order to accept the request from our uh, machine well since i am developing it and the data will not be a real world data uh, what i will going to do is i will add uh, a ip address to access a uh, i will make this database to accept a request from any ip address to do that just go to network access and then click on add ip address and here click on allow access from anywhere and this will allow the database to access from any ip address and since it's in test mode you can do that without any issue so just click on confirm it will take some time as you can see it's saying pending and after some time you will be able to see active as a status which means our database uh, is accessible from any ip address now so that won't create any issue from our side to be able to make requests there so now just go to database and now let's just uh, gather uh, get the url of it so that we can connect it to our mongo so click on this connect and uh, here select the drivers because here you can see it's saying select the driver if you are using node.js and yeah we are using node.js so select that and copy the database uh, link which is over right here paste that link in the .env file and store it inside this db location and we need this password so cut this password and paste it over here replace that password with this arrow password arrow bracket if you don't provide the password here you won't be able to access the database so since i have added the password if i save now i will be able to access the database so again how can i connect the mongoose since i have the url i can just say process.env and this process.env will let you select the variables from .env file so what's the variable called it is db underscore location and afterwards add a comma and pass an object inside it saying auto index to be true so it will enable the auto indexing for our mongo database so that it would be easy for us to index the data great so if i save well you see i got some errors it's saying uri parameter something i don't know what it is but it is uh, basically this means is it's not able to find the url of the database why is that because uh, for you to access the uh, variables from env file you have to first import env library inside the file so to do that just add a import and then say dot env slash config and this will import the config file of this dot env so that now you can use process dot env in order to access the url or the variable and since we have the url now i should be able to connect with the database and now you can see i'm not getting any error i'm getting listening on port 3000 which means i'm able to connect with the database great so our mongo setup is done and our server is done so now let's start listening for some routes so to make routes what we can do is we can first access the server and then we have to say what sort of request method we want and since the sign in and sign up will be a form submissions uh, we want it to be post and we are basically saying that server will get a post request on what route so i have to pass the route here and the route will be sign up so if the server get a post request on this sign up route it will run a callback where it will have access to request and response and that callback basically this is we have in this callback i will just response the user with a json and inside of it i will just respond with request.party so whatever i have written is basically means that uh, first of all inside this callback i have access to the request that uh, is coming from the front end and the response that we i will use to send the data to the front end so response basically means we are sending the data to the front end and what type of data we are sending it's a json type of data and 
request dot body is just the data that you got from front end so basically whatever we are receiving from the front end i am just sending it back to the front end so if i say let's test it out and see whether or not this route is working so to do that if i open my uh, folder view you can see there is a request dot rest file so you can use this request dot rest file in order to make a request to this server and to be able to make a request using this dot rest file make sure you have a rest extension installed so if i go to extension manager and here search for rest client you can see this one is the rest client and make sure this is installed in your vs code otherwise you won't be able to use dot rest file in order to make a request so once this is installed in your system just go and open the request dot rest and now here let's make request so basically to make request we have to first define the method of it so the method is post and the url of uh, the root is http slash slash local host slash sign up and then i have to set the headers for it and the header will be content type basically declaring what sort of content it is uh, the content is application slash json and after you are done setting the headers add a extra enter telling the rest file that the headers are done and after one extra enter make an object which will be a json and here you can pass any json data you want to send basically right now i'm just sending the full name which is kunal kumar the my, my name uh, to this sign up root and let's check out uh, that in the response am i getting uh, this full name kunal or not so if i click on send request well first of all i got some error it's saying isn't running on the requested server port oh actually you have to give uh, the port number here as well so say localhost column 3000 because our server is running on 3000 port so now it should be able to make requests so if i click on send request well you can see something i got here but i'm not seeing any json or neither the full name but you will see there is a status code of 200 which means everything is working fine so why i am not able to uh, why i'm not getting full link let's see so if i go here and just basically simply console log request dot body and if i save and again make request if i go on my terminal you can see there is undefined which means there is no body and why uh, why is there no body because our server doesn't know the json uh, we have to enable a json uh, sharing in our server in order to accept the json data to do that we will use middlewares of express so we can say server dot use to use the middlewares and inside this i can just say express dot json and call this json method and basically this express dot json method will, will enable json sharing and will accept a json data from front end so if i save it now and click on send request again you can see i am getting the full name json in the response and if i open it up you can see in the console i am also getting the full name kunal kumar which means we are able to accept the json now okay so now let's just remove it because obviously we don't want to send the data that we received right so now let's set up our uh, sign up route for the form validation and then we will add or uh, store the data in the database to add or create a new user so to first uh, retrieve the data what we will do is uh, uh, we have to define what we will accept from the front end so in the uh, sign up case we just need three things a full name email and a password we will need only these three inputs in order to create a, a user so we will destructure it from the request dot body so, and to destructure it what we can do is we can add a let or a const variable at the beginning and then just wrap this variable names inside curly brackets and just set it equals to request dot body so basically what it will do is it will destructure full name email and password from request dot body so whenever you want to access full name 
you don't have to write request dot body dot full name you can just simply write full name and it will just retrieve it from the request dot body which is the data we will get from the front end so yeah so to do validation what we will do is we will use if and else so let me add a comment here saying validating the data from front end and here i will add a if condition saying if the full name which is this variable that we get from the request dot length to check whether it is a long string or not so what we want is if our full name is less than three letters we will throw an error saying full name must be or greater than three letters so in that case i can say full name dot length is less than three so if this is the case inside it i will just say return and in the return i will say response dot json actually i will say response and then i will say status so status is to throw a status code with the response as well so the status code that we will throw is 403 403 status code is sort of invalidation status code that's why i'm saying 403 and then in the data i will send json to the front end saying an json with the error keyword and here i can just say my what is the error so the error is full name must be at least three letters long like this and if the full name is greater than three i will just in the end return response dot status of 200 dot json and in the json for now i will just say status okay which means everything is fine so now let's test it so let's go to request dot rest and since i have this full name key in my json and this is obviously longer than three letters if i press send request this should give me status okay as you can see right here but if i just remove everything and i say let's say uh, ku which is less than three letters if i send the request now you can see i got error the full name must be at least three letters long which means our validation is working great so after the full name we will verify our email for that add a if and this here we will first check whether or not we have email so for that i will say email dot length and basically email dot length will give me the length of it so if it is zero well zero equals to false which means this won't run so, but we have to run it when it is zero in that case to convert the false to true we can add a exclamation sign in the beginning so what it will do the email dot length will give us a zero and zero means false and since we have exclamation in the beginning of false it will convert that false to true basically which means this condition will be true so if this is true i will return let me uh, indent it properly in the response i will return response with a status of 403 and a json with a error key and the error will be and email so if i go here and send the request you will see again i am getting full name because the full name is not worth uh, three letters long so let me add my name let me send the request and you will see i got an error and why is that it is because even though i don't have an email length i have to provide this email in request body otherwise the body won't be able to destructure it and this will be equals to then undefined and we can't check the length of undefined right so in that case i can go here and i can say email and i can just set it to blank if i send request now you can see i got an error saying enter email which means this validation is also working great let me cancel it now the third thing uh, the third validation we will do is we will check the email pattern whether it's a correct email pattern or not we will check basically that uh, it includes at the rate and a domain name or not so to do that we will use uh, a pattern called regex pattern and if you go to your front end file in the source folder you will find this regex.txt just open this and you will find these two variables which is email regex for the email pattern and the password regex for password pattern 
there should be regex so just copy these two lines and actually just go at the top after this port and paste this so this is the email pattern basically saying that we need an at the rate then we need dot and then we need a domain which should be two or three letters long and the password regex which is the password validation that we will do afterwards so let's add a if condition here saying email regex which is the variable name for this pattern dot test will allow us to test what string we want to test on this regex so the string we want to test is this email string and if it will give us true then we want uh, we don't want to run this so if it will give us false then we have to run it in that case we have to convert the false to true so add an exclamation sign in the beginning and now i can just say return response with a status code of 403 and a json with an with an error key and the error would be email is invalid great so if i go here and let's say i say uh, ast if i send the request you can see the email is invalid because it uh, doesn't have any at the rate or the domain so if i say uh, let's say kunal at the rate gmail dot a you can see i this a is not a proper domain but still i have given a basically a good amount of email uh, pattern so if i click it again you will say uh, i am getting email is invalid because this letter is not a domain to make it a domain i can say dot co or dot com and if i send the request i will get a status okay which means the email validation is also working so after email we have to verify the password so we will do one thing we will say just to check the password with the regex we have so i will say password regex dot test and i will pass the password here and if it is false in that case i will run this by adding this exclamation sign and inside it basically i will just again return a response with a status code of 403 and a json with an error key and the error will be password should be 6 to 20 characters long with a numeric one lowercase and one uppercase letters well basically our regex is validating for this thing the password should be 6 to 20 letters long the it will include one numeric one lowercase and one uppercase letter this is what our uh, regex is doing so let me first uh, enable my word graph and this is pretty much we are done with our validation so if this works then we can uh, store our user in database so let me add a password key here to check whether or not it's working and here i can say one two three which is obviously not following the syntax or the pattern so if i click send request you can see i got error saying password should be 6 to 20 characters long which is great so if i give a password which should follow this which means a capital letter and then some lowercase and then a number which uh, is this one and uh, this is more than six characters so if i just send the request i got status okay so this is the way you can validate your form data after that we have to store our data in our uh, backend database but before doing that we have to convert this password into a hash password basically what hash password means is uh, if i have suppose kunal as a password i want to hash it with something called gibberish so that if anyone go inside our database they can't tell what is the password of the email so this you, you will see in your database but this will convert back to the actual password for us to validate it uh, in the code so that you don't have to worry about password leaking so to do that we will use a library called pcrypt.js and it is already installed in this project so just say import and then import bcrypt js from actually say bcrypt from bcrypt js 
so this will import the pcrypt from pcrypt.js and then we have to use this pcrypt in order to encrypt the password so i will say pcrypt dot hash to hash the password and here this method takes a couple of arguments the first argument at stake is what string we want to hash and in this case we want to hash the password and then it stake how many time we want to repeat the process to make it more complex and i'm saying it to be 10 rounds which is uh, we call salting and then it will give us a callback so i will just run a function here basically and this function will give us access to error if any error occurs and then the hash password that we get from the hashing so basically for now i'm just console logging or actually yeah i will just console log uh, the hash password to see what i'm getting so if i open my rest file and since the password is valid if i click send request okay i got an error was the error cannot find packet okay so uh, this should be bcrypt instead of bcrypt.js so just correct that let me see yeah the server is running if i click send request i got a status okay which means the form is submitted and if i come here you can see i got this which is the hash password of uh, this string so basically we will store this password in our database instead of storing this password great so now we can close our terminal and let's store this in our database so to store uh, the data the user in the database let's first make a username so let's say let username because uh, let's just say anything because if i open my user schema let's see what sort of data we want so here it is you can see in our user schema we have a personal info where i will store full name which i am getting from the front end email also i'm getting from front end password also i'm getting from front end and bio well i am not giving the option to set up bio in front uh, while creating the account uh, user can create it afterwards in the settings but uh, we have to create this username dynamically so that we can create the profile uh, profile root for the user so that user can see his profile on the root uh, like slash username right and the profile image well it's just a default function which is returning this dynamic link which just provide a profile image and then we have this social links well this social links uh, uh, is also user can use the settings to add this and the account info well user don't have to edit these stuff and these all stuff user don't have to edit so basically we just need a username to create in order to store the data so for that i will say username and basically i will say uh, just get the email and get whatever uh, we have before the at the rate so to do that what i can say i can say email to select the email and then i can say split to split the string and from where i have to split from where the at the rate is and then i will just select the first uh, item of that array which is zero so basically if i have a string of as at the rate gmail.com then this will return me an array of as and gmail and from there since i am accepting the uh, retrieving the zero index item this way will give me as which i will store as a username so i hope you got that so once i got the user name i can uh, create the user so to create a user we will use or actually we will create a user variable so say let user equal make sure this is small uh, case and then set it equals to new and user well this user is this user js file name so we have to first import it as well so if i type user again you can see i'm getting this recommendation from vs code saying import it from schema so if i just click here it will import it here saying import user which is the file name from this schema and let me just separate this from above of the import because we will import uh, lots of schema so let me just say schema below right so since i have access to this user schema of mongo database i can say i can call this class and inside it i can provide the data i want to set 
so basically i have to cite the personal info of the user so just say personal info make sure you type everything exactly the same we have in here because if a spelling is uh, if there is any spelling mistakes it won't work it will throw an error so make sure this is correct and inside the personal info we have uh, these three things full name email and password so let's store that so here you can just say full name and comma email so basically if you just say full name what it will do it will store it as like full name and then the full name variable so it's just a short form of that and since we want email to store as an email key i can do that but i can't say password because it will store password as a password and uh, this will password will be this password but i have to store this hash password so i can say here hash password and then i need the username so i can just say username and it will just store that username so this will create an user object this will create a user object now we have to save it in our database otherwise we won't be able to see it so to save it you can just say user to access this variable that we just created and then call the save method that you get from mongoose so it will save the user in the database and afterwards we can use dot then because this is a promise so whenever this promise get resolved we get the access of this then to run it uh, or to run whatever call code we want after it so basically here i can say you which basically will return whatever the user it stored and i will just in return in response i will say status uh, 200 and uh, i will just send the data saying user with this you so basically once the user is saved i will send the user data to our front end just for right now because uh, we don't want to send all of the user data to the front end but for just now i am sending it like this and i can just remove the console log because i don't need it and uh, whenever you use then make sure you use catch block as well to catch any error you get so here just add a catch with an error and say if somehow we get any error just return a response of status of 500 which is an internal server error code and there you can say return a json uh, with a error key and the error will be error that we get from and then error dot message so this will return us the error message so let's just save it and uh, if i go to my uh, rest file here since the full name is good email is also valid and the password is also valid if i click on send request i should see this data in my database let's see whether it's not working or not so if i click send request well again i got error and the error is cannot find module what module it is not finding uh, it is saying okay uh, the url of the user schema is not correct so let's see why it is not so import user from schema slash let me just write it again schema schema uh, slash user and also make sure you add dot js otherwise it won't import the uh, user so make sure you add dot js otherwise it won't import the user or any schema so i should uh, see the data in database now so if i click send request now yeah i got a status okay but this will throw an error because it will say cannot set headers and basically the reason to throw this error is uh, basically to save the data in our database mongoose takes some time maybe in milliseconds or in seconds but uh, because of that since it's taking some time we are returning this status in advance and since the response is already sent we can't then again send the response right so to make sure that just remove this response and just save it and let's see whether or not we get the data here so if i go browse collection i should see data here you can see i have this users collection where i am getting this data if i just uh, in a uh, toggle this personal info you will see i get the full name email password which is the hash password and the username 
the username is basically whatever we have before the at the rate in the input so this means uh, we have successfully stored data or user in our database now one more thing i have to see is uh, before storing the data in our database i have to check whether or not the email is already in the database so we have we don't want to create a user with same email right so to do that we have to do nothing actually because if i go to user.js schema you can see there is an email and there is a property saying you need true basically mongodb allow you to add uh, any field a uniqueness by saying you need true so that it will uh, throw an error uh, before inserting the data so if it insert the error uh, data and it found that okay the email is already in the database then it will throw an error saying it is a duplicate so let's see whether it's not working whether it's working or not so if i just send request it should give me an error because this email is already existing in the database so if i click on send request you got you see i got an error saying duplicate key error collection test.user basically it's just saying that personal info.email is already existing in the database so i can't store it in the database well that's great but we can't send this to our front end to say that uh, this is what we are getting because this is not uh, human readable right so to make or to change this message what we can do is i can add a condition here saying if error dot code is equal equals to 11000 so basically whenever the mongoose get a duplication error it throws an error with a code of 11000 uh, because in the rest if i send it again you can see i am getting here e and then the 11000 which is the code of the error so by this code we will identify whether or not we caught this duplication error and if we get the duplication error in that case i will just return a response with a status of 500 because it's a internal server error and i will just say a json with an error and the error will be email already exists simple so if i send it again i should see email already ex exist and you can see instead of getting that uh, large encrypted sort of error i got this email already exists great so basically everything is working fine now one more thing i have to do before going on to uh, login or anything is that i have to make a way to create this username dynamically because what is it's doing right now is just splitting whatever we have in the email but uh, since we can provide an email with different domain like instead of email gmail i can say yahoo so basically this email is different than gmail.com right but uh, it when it get uh, uh, when the username will get out of it it will just be the kunal and that's already exist in our database right so we can't have two users with a same username in that case we have to create a new username or actually a function which will check this so for that what we can do is just go out of this server post and at the top we will create a function to create the username let's call this function generate username and this will be an asynchronous function because we will wait for the response from the database uh, so add a async here and this will take the email as a parameter so that we can generate the username so basically here what i will do i will just uh, copy this line and i will paste it right here so what this will function do is uh, basically it will generate the username but uh, like the way we are generating here but after generating it it will go in the database and it will uh, search whether or not we have a user with this username if we found anything we will add a random number after this username to differentiate this user from that user and then afterward we will give the user the ability to change it from the settings and then and then we can throw an error saying this username is already taken so everything will be fine right so just here i can say let is username unique 
I will just make a variable saying is you is username unique and I will set its equals to await which is uh, will be waiting so like here I will uh, search the username in the database and since it will take some amount of time I will wait on this line that's why I have this asynchronous function to be waiting on this line and to see whether or not a user name exists in our database I will say user to see in the users collection and dot exists is a method from the mongoose that you can use to check whether or not a field uh, or a data exists in the database so I have this users collection and there I will see that personal info which is this personal info because the username is inside this personal info so I have to access it like this like personal info dot username and then I have to give the value which will be the username that I have just generated and this user dot exist will just retrieve uh, this document so if it founds the document it will give us that document but if it doesn't found that document it will just uh, give us a false which means we don't have username in a database and then we will be able to store this username and create a new user so here I can just say dot then because exist is also a promise so once it's get resolved I will get a result from it and the result basically I will just return the result so I can just say result right uh, right here so whatever we get from this exist method I will just store that in the user name unit. so basically it will be a, a, a document or a false uh, actually change this username unique to is username not unique because we will uh, check for not and I can say is username not unique if that is true in that case I will say whatever the username we have I will add some sort of random string here and if the is username not unique is false which means it is unique then I will just uh, leave it I won't uh, go and do anything and at the end I will just return this is uh, this username that we have right here so what I will add in this username well I have a library installed in this node.js server which is nano id so just import nano id from the nano id like this with the curly brackets and basically this nano id will give you a random unique string which you can attach anywhere to make things unique so I will just call this nano id here like this and this will give me some sort of string and then I will attach that string to this username and that username will get a return from this function and we can store that function uh, value here and then we can create the user and then we can save it it's just simple as that so now let's call this function so copy this and instead of saying uh, email dot split here I will just paste this and call this function but since this function is an asynchronous which means it will take some time I have to wait here otherwise we will uh, create the user without the username so for that make this callback as a asynchronous function and add a wait keyword here so that uh, the JavaScript will wait for the response from this line and then go below of it otherwise it won't go below so if I save it and uh, since I already have this username in my database if I click send request it should give me some other username okay so it's gave me some error let's see what is it's saying okay because we have to provide email as well right I have called the generate username but I haven't provided the email so just add the email and save it and let's call it again and you can see I got a user object and in the username if I see you can see I got a username saying Kunal and then this random sort of string well basically this string is too long so I will just short it and how I can short it well I can say dot substring which will basically cut the string and here I can just say the starting index which will be the zero and I can say just go to 
uh, till fifth index which will be five so after the username it will add a, a unique five characters so if i save it and if i click here again well it will throw me error because this email already exists so if i just change it to something maybe any domain dot com and if i say send request i got this with an email of kunal at the rate something dot com and a username with kunal and some random string so you can see we have generated some dynamic username as well and we have sought our email validation as well so pretty much our uh, sign up form is done now we just have to like uh, sort the data we send to the front end so you can see right here i have this personal info and all the data since i have made three requests so that's why i have three users here so now let's uh, code what we want to send in the database actually and to do that what we will do is we will create another function here before the generate and I will say format data to send. Basically this function will take the user object and from there it will uh, get whatever the data we want to send and it will send that data. So what this function is, let's code that. So in the return, I will send profile image of the user because i will then uh, store this profile image in the local host or the session of the front end so that uh, user uh, will whenever the user is logged in i don't have to request the profile image and the username or the full name every time from the server i can just access it from the session so in the profile image i can say user dot personal info because this user will be this user parameter that we will pass while calling this format data and in that we will have this personal info because we have this personal info in the user schema and inside it we have this username and profile image and the email right so i can say personal info dot profile image so this will give me the profile image now i need a username so i will say username user dot personal info dot username and then I need full name as well. So I will say user dot personal info dot full name. So this will basically give me these three. So whenever I will call this format data to send and pass the user, I will only get these three data that I can send to the front end. Let's see how it's working. So instead of sending the whole user here, instead of saying JSON or anything, what I can do is uh, in the JSON, I can remove this and in the JSON I can simply say format data to send and I can pass the user here which is this U that we get after saving the user. So once calling this function it will go here it will format the data and it will return it that we can send it as a JSON. So let's see it's working or not. So let me change the email to kunal2.gmail.com and let me send the request. And you can see instead of getting the whole user uh, object in uh, this time we got only three keys with the profile image, the username and the full name, which is good. Now, another key that I want in the response is the access token. Well, what is access token? Access token is a dynamic JSON web token, you can say that we will create and send to the front end and that token will be a long string. Uh, will, and that string uh, will be uh, will be an encrypted version of our database id that will be stored in our database so whenever we need to verify the request from the user side from the front end whenever we make a request we will send that access token to the server and then in the server we will convert that access token or which is the long string to the id that we have and then we will check the id in our database that is it a correct id or not and if it is a correct id which means the user access is valid and the request is valid and then only we will uh, grant uh, the user permission to do changes like uh, change the profile image or change uh, or update uh, his profile and create a blog then only we will give those access otherwise we won't give access because the access token is not correct so to create an access token again we will use another library called json web token so to do that use that add import json 
web token from jw json web token actually json is should be jwt so this jwt is from json web token that we will use to create that long string so what i will do is basically i will just return this right now but i will create an access token here so for that make a variable call it access token and here i will say equals to jwt dot sign to convert the data uh, into a long json web token we have to provide the data in the sign so in the sign i can first say what data i want to convert and basically in the sign i will say convert this object into a long hash string and this object will contain the id of the user so that we can afterwards check or validate the user whenever we want to uh, check so that id that we can uh, we can get that id from this user as if i go in my database you can see i have this underscore id in every data which is dynamically generated from uh, by the mongodb so i can say underscore id and before that make sure you add user dot otherwise it won't be able to access it right so jwt dot sign the first argument is what data i have to convert and the second is what sort of a private key i have like uh, i have to give a sort of long private key that it use as an algorithm to convert it into a hashing so make sure this is a uh, not any common text like if you type here apple or anything this is something which is making sense you should give here anything which is a random string so it will it'll be much more difficult to uh, crack the access token so to generate that key what i will do is i will open my terminal and i will just stop the server for now i will clear it and i will say node so this will uh, give me the access to write node inside the terminal here I will say require just uh, type whatever I am typing and uh, you will get the key so here I will uh, call crypto so basically there is a library in node.js named crypto which allow you to make a random string so I will say require dot crypto dot random bits and the random bits will be 64 and then I will say two string. I will create a random bit of 64 and I will convert that bytes to a, a string and that string will be in a hexadecimal, right? And then I can press enter. Okay, it uh, gave me error, can't find crypto. So this may be cryptos, I guess. Yeah, actually the spelling is wrong. So let me uh, clear this and uh, type it again. So let me how do I exit it? Uh, let just let me just exit it. Yeah, and let me type it again. So I will say require crypto. Make sure the spelling is correct right now uh, at this time, and just say random bytes. The bytes will be sixty four, and convert that uh, bytes to string, which will be in hex code, and just press enter, and you can see. I got a long string that I can use uh, to hash the JSON web token and every time I call this uh, to string thing you can see whenever I get the number this is all different so make sure you create your own and don't use mine because this uh, will create more secure thing so I will select any of these so I will just copy this and I can get out of this node.js and i can start my server again great and make uh, after you copy that just go to your dot env file and inside the secret access key just paste that string so and we will use the secret access key in our server js to uh, hash the json so here i will just say process dot n dot secret access key and this will use uh, this will create a hash string so i can just basically say now access token with the access token that we have so i can just say comma so it will add access token so if i send the data to the backend or make a request 
I should see an access token with these three keys in the response. So if I click it again, well, I should give an error. Yeah, it is giving error because the email is same. So let me change it to email three, Kunal three. And if I send it again, yeah, now you can see with these profile user and full name, I also got this access token, which is this long key that we will store in the user's browser session to validate the user login every time you, uh, the user access the website so that we don't have to ask him or her to log in every time to make a request. Great. So the server is done for the sign up. Now let's work on the sign in as well and then we will uh, connect the server to the front end uh, for sign up and sign in port at the same time because uh, the forms are same in the front end, right? So just uh, come down and let's uh, after the uh, after the sign up post just add server dot post to make another post request and this route will be sign in again this will take request and response so what we have to do in this sign in uh, route first we will do the same that we did for sign up to destructure the data so that we can access the uh, parameters or the data easily so i can say let and i will receive only two things from front end email and the other one will be password because we have only two fields in the login the email and the password and i will destructure it with the request dot body great so once i got the email i have to check this uh, whether or not this email is in the database or actually you can say i will find the document with this email presuming that assuming that this email is already existing in the database so to do that first of all we have to access the collection and the collection is basically this user so whenever you have to access the collection you will uh, use it or access it by the name of the file name which is the user and then dot and what method we will use to find and that method is this find one this find one method is provided by mongoose so that you can run find queries of mongodb in order to find a document so this find one basically will take whatever data you want to uh, validate or check in order to match that yes this is the document that i want so i just want the document which has this email inside it and since the email is unique it will give me only one document so i will say personal info dot email because remember in the user's schema here the email is inside this personal info so whenever you will try to access email full name or even the password username you have to say it like personal info and then dot the field that you want right so i want uh, to find the personal info dot email which will be equals to the email that i got from the front end so this will give me the document and then since the find one is a promise i will call this then method in order to proceed whenever the find one get resolved so if it founds the data it will give me the data which i can store it as a user and basically i will here just console log uh, the user and i will in the response i will return response.json saying status user document uh, got user document and since i am using then i have to use cache to uh, validate or to throw uh, to handle any error basically so i can say here error and i will just basically say console log whatever the error you have so that we know that this is the error we are facing and in the response just send uh, a status code of 403 because we will say it has a invalidation instead of internal server error and in the response i will just send the error key and the error will be email not found because there is only one way to run this cache if this doesn't found an email this will throw an error saying this doesn't exist and since it will throw an error this will run by giving us this error so let's see it's working or not if i go on request.rest well this kunal at the rate gmail.com exists in our database so if i click send request 
well since it's a, a sign up route obviously it will say or oh, email already so make sure you say e sign in you change the route and then click send request and also remove this full name because we don't need that full name and sign in so send the request and you can see i got a status with caught user document if i open my terminal you can see i got an object with personal info social link so basically i got the data where the email is whatever i have sent from the front end great but let's say i'm sending any random email that doesn't exist in a database in that case if i click send request it should give me an error in the response saying email not found let's see it is doing or not so if i send the request now okay I, it is saying that user got the user but here it is saying null okay so we have to check for that as well so uh, instead of doing this i have to let actually check for a condition here saying if user is null so like if there is no user so add exclamation because null is also false so by adding exclamation this will convert that false into true so if there is no user i will uh, throw throw an error just like this so this will throw an error message and basically then uh, since i am throwing an error this catch block will accept that error and in the console basically i will see this console error and i will send this email not found so if i just go on my rest and if i press send request you can see i got email not found because it is null or actually instead of doing things like this actually just return the response right here so just copy it and paste it like this so if we don't have any user this will return and if we find any sort of error we will return a response with a 500 because then it will be an internal server error and in the response after the error key the value will be error dot message so we will be able to access the error dot message because we will this error will be from mongodb not our custom message error and yeah this is a good way to handle this situation so since everything is working i can now uh, go and check whether the password is correct for this user or not and to check the password is correct or not uh, we have to uh, use the bcrypt again this bcrypt library because uh, you can uh, see in the database i have this password in this bcrypt form which i have converted using this bcrypt so only this bcrypt library know how to convert that random string or the hash string into again a string that we can validate that we got from the front end right so to compare it i can call bcrypt and then i can call a compare method to compare the strings and here the first thing is i want to send uh, the first parameter i have to give is what string i want to uh, compare and that is the password that i got from the front end and the second is user dot personal info dot password well this user dot personal info dot password will give you the access of password which is stored in a hash form inside this database because this user is the whole document containing all the information and from there i'm just retrieving this personal info dot password so once it compare those two things it will give access to a callback so i can run a callback and the callback i can have an error and a result so if we get any sort of error if we get any error i will return a response with a status of 403 because it will be an invalidation and i will just send a json in response with error and the error will be error occurred while login please try again like this simply but if we don't get any error so let's see the, what is the result so if the result is true well then i will send the uh, formatted data to the uh, front end 
the same data that we sent uh, here we will call this format data send to send this uh, data same data to the front end but before that let's check whether or not the uh, whether the result is false so if the result is false which means the passwords are incorrect in that case we need to run this condition and here i can just add an exclamation in the beginning so if the password is incorrect i will return a response with a status of 403 and a json with an error key and the error will be incorrect password and if everything works like this which means i can add a else so if the result is not false and it is true which means uh, the password is correct in that case i can just return a response with a status of 200 and i can send a json and in this json instead of uh, adding a, a bracket i can just call format data to send and in this format data to send i can pass this user that we get after this find one so again this will uh, call this format data to send function which is right here it will create an access token and it will return this uh, object as a json to the front end so basically this is much for our sign in and if this works our sign in is pretty much done so let's test uh, our sign in route whether or not it works or not so well this is the email that exists in the database kunal at the red gym .com, and the password well capital k u n l kunal one is a correct password that i have stored in this email so if i send the request it should give me the formatted data but i got a status of got user document again why because i am sending this at the end but not waiting for this pcrypt right so just remove this and now let's make the request again and now since the password and the email are correct i got the access token profile image username and the full name but suppose i remove the one and it's not the correct password obviously if i click send request now you can see i got an error saying incorrect password and it is saying incorrect password which means the email is correct but the password is incorrect but if the email is also incorrect and send if i send the request then i get an error saying email not found which means if the email is not correct, I will get an error email not found. If the password is incorrect, I will get a error of incorrect password, which means the login validations are complete and the login route is also done. Now we just have to connect our server and the front end together so that from the front end, after filling the form, it make it will send that data to, to the server and we will uh, then receive these JSON and act whatever the data we get. So let's go and let's code our front end now. So to connect our front end to the uh, backend, let's write our code inside this user auth form and let's uh, submit the form. So to submit a form, what we will do is first of all, find this sign up or sign in button because whenever we will click on this, then only we will submit the form, right? So there it is you can see this is type submit and that i have so just add here a on click function and whenever we click it just call handle submit function which obviously does not exist so we will create it right next so just copy this and before this return add a const and create this handle submit function and add a e as a parameter here so basically whenever you click there it will call the handle submit and since we have added an e parameter i will be able to access the mouse or the event information so that i can here call e dot prevent default to prevent the form from submission because i don't have to submit the form while clicking on this button so that's why if i because if you click here without it it will submit the form and then we won't be able to validate it and throw the errors and everything like that so make sure you add this e parameter and then the e dot prevent default to uh, stop the form from submission great so great now how i can access the data from the form suppose in the full name i have entered 
kunal in the email i have entered kunal123 at gmail.com in the password let's say i have 1234 and if i press sign up well it's not submit which is great but how i can access this form info so to access it first we have to uh, get this form we have to select this form element and to select any html element inside react we can use react hook which is a uh, use ref hook so for that just at the very top of the component make a variable you can call it anything i'm calling it auth form because i'm creating it for the authentication and i will just call it to use ref hook make sure you import that as well so just add a import use ref from react so basically use ref you will be able to reference this form uh, using this use ref and then uh, afterwards uh, inside uh, any function you can access this auth form variable to access the html element of that so to reference it just come here in the form and add a ref prop and in the ref just pass the variable name that is equals to the use ref so just paste that and then what it will do react will store the form inside this auth form and then we can access it so i guess this is done now just come here and below that we will retrieve the data from the form so to access the form we will say let form equal new form data because we have to convert the data from uh, the form because that is not a formatted data we get so to uh, convert the data into a form data we have to reference the form here and the form here is just stored in the auth form dot current so auth form dot current will give you the form html tag and that html tag will get inside this form data and then that form data uh, will retrieve all the form data and store inside this form and then uh, that we can use afterwards so basically if i just go and say console.log form and save it and if i fill anything like kunal kunal123 at the rate gmail.com123 as a password and if i open my console to see the console log let me click sign up you will see in the console log i got a form data but if i expand it there is nothing the form data object is empty this is because we have to loop through the form data in order to add that inside the form uh, because that is for security purpose this doesn't show up like that so for that make an, another variable let's call it form data and just set it equals to an empty object and then we will loop through this form data that we get after uh, converting the form so i will just uh, say for i will say let and inside it make add a square bracket and say key and a value of form dot entries so basically this form is this form data dot entries will give you access to these three inputs and uh, once we get these three inputs we will uh, so basically this uh, loop is just saying since we have these three inputs we will run this loop three times and then we will store it like key and the value the key will be the name of the input field and value will be whatever the value is here so just inside the loop just say form data which is this one and to add this here i can say form data dot key actually don't say dot key in the square bracket say key equal whatever the value inside it so this will store the data so afterward if i say console.log form data if i save and click on sign up i should see an object with these three inputs so if i click here you can see now i got an input field uh, an object with this email full name password which has whatever i have written inside this input text field great now we just have to send this or validate it front end first and then send it to the backend so we will do validation in front end as well so to do validations 
what I will do, I will just copy and paste the validation from the server. So uh, go to server.js and just copy everything, paste right here. And since we don't have access to full name, email, email, ejects and password, let's fix this. So let's uh, go here and first of all, destructure these, these email, full name and password from this form data. So to destructure it, we can say let full name, comma, email, comma, password equal form data. So it will destructure it from there. So you can see these error are gone. Now we need email rejects and password rejects for that to come up here and just copy these two lines and paste it actually paste it right above this form data. So we have a D regex as well. Now it obviously it is saying the response is not defined because we don't have the response. So instead of uh, setting its response JSON, just select all these things using command or control D in VS code. And then you can uh, add it all of them at once. Here just say console.log. So for now, whatever error we get, we will see that error in the console. Afterward, we will create a UI alert to show the uh, error to the user. Okay. So let me first clear my console. And if I come here, since the data is valid, if I click sign up, you will see I got an error saying password should be 6 to 20 character, which means because the password is invalid, obviously. But if I go and change this to KU, which is obviously less than three letters, if I click sign up, I will get error full name must be at least three letters long, which means our validations are working. Now there is one issue. What it is, since we are using this user auth form uh, for both the sign up and sign in, if I go to sign in page and if I fill this, let's say kunal at the rate gmail.com and a password one, two, three. If I press sign in, you can see this gave me a lot of error. And this is because we don't have access to this full name length because we don't have a full name input, right? So to not check for full name when we are on the sign up page, what I will do is we'll cut this and I will say if we have a full name because this will be undefined. So if we have a full name, we will check for this full name condition. Otherwise, we won't check for the condition. So now if I click here, Okay, I got another error. Let's see what it is. It is form page dot six nineteen. Okay, actually I have to refresh it because uh, the reference doesn't change. So now I can add a Gmail and I can add a password. Let me correct the pattern. If I press sign in, you can see I got the error. But uh, if I don't have a full name validation here, then if I press the sign in, it will give me error because the full name is not defined. Okay. Great. So now, uh, let me fill this again because we will work on sign up first. You can see all the data is correctly syntax so that, uh, all the data is valid so that we won't lie in this condition category. So now let's uh, submit this data to our backend or actually before submitting this data to our backend, let's uh, uh, create the UI alert and to create the UI alert, we will use another library that is toaster and toaster basically allow you to create a, a beautiful toast alerts in react. So just at the top import, add import. Uh, toast toast from react hot, hot toast and we need to import toaster as well toaster so basically this toaster is the html component that we will add inside the return so that the toast function knows where it has to render the alert and the toast is the function that we will call every time we want to show an alert so basically first copy this toaster element and in the inside the section before the form add that toaster and close it like this. So if you don't have a toaster element inside your page, you won't be able to see the alert. So make sure you add that 
and once done we can call this toast whenever we want to alert the user so here instead of saying console log let me just select all console log using control or command d and instead of this i can say toast dot error toast dot error will throw an error and if you uh, say toast dot success and it will then it will show uh, a success alert but here i need the error alert so i will say toast error so now if i uh, let me just uh, so let me fill again with a incorrect valid value and well i got some errors the error is are not valid as a react child object and because this is because uh, we have to provide a string here not an actual object so to fix that just remove this object and the error and this will fix that error so let me just quickly remove this error from everywhere yeah so now if i refresh and i will add a invalid value and submit the form you can see i got full name must be at least three letters long if i add a full name but uh, let's say the email is invalid and click on sign up you can see i got email is invalid which means the toaster is working pretty much good now now we have to just send this data to the backend so let's see how we can do that now to send the data to the backend we will create a function and we will call that function user auth through server why i'm creating a separate function because i will use this function after uh, in this later in this video to uh, make request to the server uh, while creating the google authentication so that's why i'm creating this function so let me just copy this function and uh, create it before the handle submit and basically this function will take two arguments the first is the server root which means where it has to send the data and the third second is the form data like what data it has to send right so while calling this function i have to uh, add those parameters here so what is that so at the top let's just make a variable saying server root and let's set it equals to let's uh, validate here so let's see let's say type is equal equals to sign in so if the type is equal equals to sign which means we have to send the form data to slash sign in but if the sign in type is not which means the type is not the sign in in that case i have to send the data to sign up and since i am on the sign up page if i click here the server root will be the sign up that we will be able to send so i can here say server route and this server route will just be this slash sign up actually add a colon here that's why it is giving that red line great and the second argument or the parameter i have to pass here is the form data and the form data is basically you can say form data because we have a form data object here with the name form data so whenever there is no invalidation this will call the function whenever you click it and this function will accept the server root and the form data so let's code the server uh, connection here so to make request to the server we can basically use this fetch but instead of using fetch in this project i will use another library which is, is axios and this axios is used to make request to the servers and it gives you a great way to handle the errors as well so i will use axios here to make request so call axios and uh, make sure you import it as well so once uh, i have this axios i have to say what type of uh, method i have to uh, make a request and since the uh, sign up and sign in route are accepting post method i have to say axios.post and then i have to give the domain here so instead of typing here http uh, uh, http localhost like all the way to 3000 port number uh, what i will do i will uh, make a dot env file here which is you can find it here dot env 
here you can see I have wait server domain. So just set it equals to the domain of your server. So let me just go in my rest file because there is my domain. Just copy this and paste right here. Just remove this slash from the end because we already have the slash in our server root. So just remove that. And now to access the dot env uh, variables inside the react.js well we are using weed over top of the react so i can use weed syntax to import that dot env variable so i can say import dot meta dot n and after that you can give the variable name that you want to uh, fetch from the dot env file uh, the file name is weed server domain make sure whatever you uh, make variable inside dot env it start with feed underscore otherwise it won't work so yeah so once i have the domain i have to add the server root afterwards so i will just say plus and then the server out so this will add uh, the server root which may be a sign in or a sign up to the domain which will be the local host uh, 3000 port number after that add a comma and then we can uh, provide what sort of data we want to send in this post request and the data we want to send is the form data that we will receive from the arguments when we call this user auth server so this is basically how you make a request using axios to the server so since this post is a, a promise we can use dot then to run the function whenever the promise gets resolved and once this then get resolved add a bracket and then destructure the data right here so inside the uh, brackets add a curly bracket and inside curly brackets add data so what it is doing it is basically destructuring the data from the uh, whatever response it get because in the axios it will give you response and then the object and there will you have a data and a uh, another sort of keys so since we want the data by simply saying curly brackets and data we are skipping this response part and all that stuff and we are just getting the data so just do that and then once we get the data i'm just simply console logging the data right now to see whether it's working or not and uh, if we got anything any error use the catch block for that and here to catch the error what you have to do is instead of saying data say response because in this case in the error case the axios return whole axios in which uh, the response exists and in that the data exists so this is the nested layout the axios provided file uh, giving you the error and uh, once it gave you the correct data it gave you like this so that's why I am adding curly brackets then the name of the data and the response to get the response keyword. So let me just remove this because that's for just demonstration. Right. So add a error bracket and just call it and basically whatever we got I will say toast.error to show the error and since we are sending a readable sort of error from the backend I can just say uh, toast.error response dot data dot error because you will find that uh, data and since we have a error key as a json we can access it as an error so if i save it and uh, if i uh, add my name my gmail and my password all these things are valid so we won't lie in the invalidations i it sh uh, i should see something like a toast error because this email already exists in database so this should give me error saying email is duplicate let's say uh, let's click sign up okay that's not working let's see why it's not working it's saying cannot read property of undefined reading data okay uh, the reason it's not working is our server is not accepting the request coming from this because remember this is the website made on a uh, react and this is running on its own port number which is 5147 or anything like that but 
the server is on node.js and it is running on different port which is 3000 so this server will only accept requests from the 3000 uh, port number but we are sending the request from the port number different than 3000 in my case it is 5147 port number and since the port numbers are different the server is rejecting the request and th therefore we are not able to send or receive the data and process it so to achieve or to uh, enable our server to accept the data from any port what we can do is we can use cores and to use cores what we can do is we can first import cores from cores and then just after the server say server dot use course and just call this so this will enable our server to accept the data from anywhere so now if i open my console and if i send it i should see the data or error yeah you can see now i got a toaster saying email already exists because this kunar at the rate gmail already exists in a database so to test this works or not let me just go in my database and let me just delete the whole users collection because we will create all the users from the ui now so i will type here the collection name to drop the user collection let wait for a moment and you can see there is no data in my database now so now if i click sign up you can see in the response i got this access token the full name the profile and the username and if i go in my database and refresh i should see a user yeah you can see in the users collection i got this user with the personal info name email username password everything so this means our sign up form is working now how to check whether or not the login is working well you don't have to do anything because uh, let me just remove it so because you have to don't you don't have to do anything because we already have set up the route for sign in and uh, the data is also uh, changing according to the form so you just have to go to the sign in and just here add your credentials which is kunal gmail.com and the password is this if i press sign in okay i got an error again okay so this error i am getting again and again and this is because whenever i am switching back and forth this reference is not updating so let's just refresh the page now and then uh, we will uh, update this reference later in this video but for now just refresh the page and let's see the login is working or not so let me just add a incorrect email that doesn't exist in a database and let me add any password if i say it's saying email not found and if i say give a uh, correct email but the wrong password well this is not going uh, through the server because it is giving validation error but now i got incorrect password now let's uh, give a correct password and press sign and now you can see i got access token full name profile image user so basically i am uh, receiving the data from backend whether i am logging or signing it it's me from future and uh... Here is a fix for you uh, if you are facing the same issue that the auth form is not correct. So what is the issue? Well, if I am on the login page and if I click on join us today, then if I press on sign up, this won't work because it is giving an error because the auth form is not updating. Well, I did a lot of research and tried to find any solution, but I didn't find what's the reason behind it and what is wrong with our code that is uh, doing this so instead of using the use rep what i will do is instead of calling this or creating the reference uh, for our form uh, i will just remove this auth form dot current and i won't uh, use this reference in order to access the form so i will remove all this reference code and i will just add an id over here and i will give it an any id let's say a uh, form i have given it a form and let's say form element so i have given this form element id to it and in react.js you can select your html component using its id as a variable name well that is not i have i didn't found this also in any documentation of this but i found that this works so you can do this instead of using wrap 
to select this form so if i come back and in the form data i can just pass the id as a variable name which is this form element and this is the id for our form here so the react will just select that uh, uh, treat that as a variable and that will just select this form and if i just save and come back and refresh well if i click on sign up you can see i got a validation error which means it is working but if i go to sign in and if i click sign in i got again the validation error which means this form is also working so now we won't see the error uh, where if we if the user switches the form then the form is not submittable now i just have to store this object in the session so that whenever the user come back to the website i can go and uh, retrieve the data from the session and then i can create a global context in the react and store that as a user so that i can access the user anywhere from the website what i am saying is just be with me and you will uh, understand much more in detail so yeah just close it and uh, let's store it first in the session to store this in the session let's uh, go to the sessions.jsx which you will find in common file you will find this sessions.jsx and inside it we will write all of our sessions code so basically we will have four session uh, function uh, so add a const say store in session and this function will store the value in session so it will receive uh, two argument the key and the value and this will basically uh, store the session so i will say session storage dot set item i will pass the key and the value then i get, will make another function this will be a look in session so i will call it whenever i want to uh, retrieve any data from the session i can just pass a key argument here so we just have to pass key whenever calling this so it will retrieve the data and this will basically return session storage dot set get item the key make sure you returning this as well i will also need one more which will be a remove from session which will just remove the data from session just say key and I will say return session storage dot remove item and I will just pass the key here make another function and this function will be a custom which will be a logout user and so whenever we will uh, want to log out the user we will just clear all of the data stored in the session so for that make a logout function logout user and this won't take any argument because whenever we call it we will just clear all the sessions so to clear all the sessions say session storage dot clear and run the clear method so this will just clear all the sessions now since we want to use it in external files make sure you export them as well so the way you can export them is by saying export at the beginning or by adding a export line at the end with a bracket export and then the store in session and the functions name which is store in session look in session remove from session and log out user so this is the way to create an external this is the way to create multiple functions and export it so since i have the sessions uh, functions now once i get the data from front end what i can do i can call that so i can say uh, store in session which is obviously of uh, which function this function will take key and a value and store it inside the session so the key will be user because we want to store the user and the data that we want to store will be a uh, this data but we want to stringify this because you can't store the actual object in the uh, session you have to convert that object into a string and while retrieving it you have to convert that string back into the object so to do that you can use json.stringify and this json.stringify will stringify this object data object but to retrieve the uh, data to convert the string back to the object you have to call json.farse but right now i need json.stringify so if i save it and uh, just say console.log session storage so this will just console log the session storage so if i open my console 
and uh, if I log in with my credentials, press sign in, and you can see I am getting a storage here, which means this is not uh, from the uh, data, but this is a session storage, which is with a user key and all the object inside of it. So if I again type here session storage to see what data I have in storage, you can see I have a user key with the user data, which I can use uh, whenever uh, a new user, whenever the user access the website to uh, retrieve the information of the user. Now, how we can do that? Let's see. We can check it. So to uh, set up our uh, user auth or the global context for the user, just go to app.jsx, uh, which is right here. And inside it, we will create a global context. Well, what is context? Context in React is, you can say, a global state that you can access anywhere from the uh, page. Like uh, if you create a state in React, you can only uh, use or access the state inside only that file. But uh, if you create that a uh, context, then you can access that state or the set state function from anywhere of the code. So that's what we want uh, because we want to set up the user state at the beginning of the app, but we might change the user uh, state. Uh, like if the user log out or log in, we have to change it, right? So in that case, we have to access it externally. That's why I am creating a context in the app chase. So how we can create a concept? To create a context, say const, go above the app because it's not in uh, any thing that comes inside app. So here make a, a con give a context name. So I will say here user context and I will e set its equals to create context. Well, create context is a react function which will create a context and inside it you can provide the default value and by default I am setting the create context to an empty object. And also export this because we need it in other files in order to access the context. So this is the way you set up a context. Great. Now, once you have this user context, you have to wrap the context around this root. So you can say user context. You can close it like this and make sure you close it after root. So and add the roots inside it. So inside user context, whatever elements you will have, only those elements will be able to uh, access the states that you mentioned. And since I have whole roots inside my user context, I can access the user context from anywhere in the code. Great. Now to make it working after user context, you have to say dot provider. Then only it will convert as let me select it clearly. Uh, okay. So after that, you have to say provider and then only you would be able to create it as a context. And then in the first, I have to say value and inside this value, I can pass whatever I want uh, to be accessible in all these components. And I only want the states. So I will create the user or state right here. So uh, how we create a state? It's just simple. Just say const and then the bracket and the user auth will be the user straight and uh, to set the user auth, we will create a set user auth function and I will just say use state. So this will create a user auth state and we want to access this state from anywhere on our code. That's why I, I will pass this inside here, inside the value. And make sure you add double curly brackets because this first curly bracket let you write and a JavaScript and this second curly bracket is an object. So basically uh, we are setting an object as a value which in uh, which has this user auth key with a user auth value, this set user auth key with a set user auth function. Great. Now also what we do want to do is since we want to check whether or not we have anything in our session and if we have anything, any user in session, we have want to store that uh, in the user auth. We will use use effect hook as well from the react use effect and basically this use effect hook what it do it runs one only once after 
the uh, rendering is complete. So after the rendering is complete, this use effect will uh, run only for once. If you wanted to run uh, more than once, you have to give a value here, uh, a variable that uh, whenever the data, uh, the value of that variable changes, the use effect will call. But uh, since we wanted to run only one time, I will won't I won't provide anything and I will just add a empty bracket. Uh, array great so here i will uh, retrieve the data from the session first so i will say let user in session i will say equal look in session which is uh, the session uh, function we have created and i will just uh, pass here user so this will just get the user from the session now i will check whether or not we have a session on a uh, user in session so i will say user in session if that is true in that case, I will call this set user auth to uh, set this user authentication or the value of this user auth. But first, in the use state, add a default value to be an empty object. Great. So here I can say set user auth and I can then just pass the value of it like this. But remember, since uh, this is the data we are getting from the session, it is in the string format but we want to convert that string and back to the object. So to convert that back to the object, we have to say JSON dot fast and then wrap it around this user in session so that we can set the user auth as an object, right? But if we don't have any user in session, then what we will do is we will set the user auth with an object and this object, let me enable my word wrap. And this object basically will have access token null. So if the user is not logged in, this user auth will have a access token null. But if the user is logged in, we will retrieve the user data from the session and store that inside it here, which will have a access token profile image, username, and full name, everything. So if I save it, that's great. So since I have the user stored in the session, and if I refresh the page, I should see the user auth, but I can't check whether or not I'm getting user auth. So that's why I will add a console log here. Well, I can't just simply go and add a console log. I have to first import that user auth uh, uh, state. So to import that, what we can do is we can say let we will destructure it later, but set it equals to use context well use context will uh, let you use the context so use context is a hook and using this hook you can access whatever context you want to access and the context that i want to access is this user context so i can say user context so you can see the user context is also imported and the use context is also imported so this way you can access uh, the user context and by doing this you will get access to these uh, this object which will have these two informations user auth and the set user auth but what i want is i want user auth uh, and from the user auth i actually want access token i don't want anything else but i want access token so to destructure things and more further you can say user auth and then inside of it access token so that you can access the access token by just calling the access token instead of typing user auth dot access token. Great. And the second thing we need is set user auth because once the user log in through the server, we will use the set auth user set user auth to change the user state and we will store the user object that we get from the backend to directly in the state so we can validate the user whenever we make a request to the server basically great now uh, let's see if we have access token or not so let me just add a console log access log uh, access token if i open my console if i go let me just uh, remove everything and let me just refresh it and you can see i got an access token printed here because i have uh, user in session but if i just call session storage dot clear here so this will just clear out my session uh, let let me just remove it so you can see there is a length of zero inside our session so if i refresh it again 
you will see there is null and undefined coming because we don't have any access token. Great. Now, I, what I want is once we logged in, I want to set the user auth. Now, how can I do that? It's simple. Instead of console logging, I can just call the set user auth function, which will basically call this set user auth state. Right. So just call it and you can just pass the data here and this will just change the user state and then it will re-render everything. So if I save it and open this, I can say, uh, let's log in first and let's see whether it's not working or not. So if I click sign in, you can see I got access to open, but I'm not console logging it. Why I got console, uh, this? Because since I'm setting the user auth, with the data it will re-render and since it will re-render it will go here and it will uh, render the access token great now what i want is if the user is logged in i don't want the user to stay on the login or sign up page so for that since i have the access of uh, access token what i can do is i can come right here in the return and here i can say access token with a tertiary operation so what I'm basically saying, if there is an access token, well, basically, if there is access token, I want to navigate the user to somewhere else. But if there is no access token, then I will render this, which is OK. So now how can I navigate the user to home page? Well, since we are using React Router, we can use a React Router component, which is a navigate. And this is the HTML component of uh, uh, that uh, React Router provide. And here you can just say uh, navigate to and you can provide the uh, root, which is the slash. So basically, I want uh, the user to go back to the home page. And now you can see now I'm not in my sign in page, but I am in the home page. Even if I click try click on sign in, I will uh, redirect back to the home page. You can see I'm clicking here, but I'm not able to see the sign in page. And uh, once I remove everything from my session, like this if i click the sign in now well it won't work but let me refresh it if i click sign in you will see that i am able to access the sign up uh, or sign in page so that's good now uh, let's uh, work on our navbar to uh, get the user icon once the user is logged in and let's allow the user to log out uh, when uh, the user wants So since we have our user in the session, let's uh, remove this sign in button from the nav bar and let's show the user profile when the user is logged in. So uh, to do that, open the navbar.component file and inside this navbar component, uh, we will first import our user context and then we will use the user auth state to decide whether the user is logged in or not. If the user is logged in, we will show the user profile here. If the user is not logged in, then we will show the sign in and sign up buttons. So for that, first of all, import the user context. So just add a const after the uh, search box usability state and add a curly brackets. We will restructure the data later, but right now import the context. So say use context and then type what context we want to use. And the context we need is user context. So type that and make sure you import that as well. So add import at the top and add a curly bracket inside of it. Say user context because we need to import that and we need to import it from app.jsx. So this will import user context from the app.jsx file. Now what we want, we want two things. First, we want the whole user auth object and then we will destructure this user auth to get two keys from it. The first key we want to access is uh, the access key and the second is the profile image. The profile image key will store the profile image URL that we will uh, use to set the image of the user here. And uh, the reason I am importing or destructuring the user auth separately and its key separately is because if our user auth is undefined, then the JavaScript won't be able to destructure access to them and profile image and then we won't be able to compare it in the conditions uh, using access key or profile image 
so to compare or to use variable in condition we will use user auth to check whether or not user is in the session then only we will be able to access this access to your uh, profile so you will uh, get a better understanding when you will start using it so once you are done with it now let's remove the sign in button and make the user profile like it so go to down and uh, you can find these two buttons right here just above it add a curly bracket so that we can write javascript and here i will just say access token actually this should be access token because we are storing access token not access key so let me correct that spelling here access token yeah so we will check here whether or not access token exists so if access token exists in that case we will render something uh, let's just type user is logged in and if the user is not logged in which means the access to, uh, token is not there in that case we will render these two buttons but we can't render two parent element to render two parent element we can grab those two parent element inside this empty element like this and this will render those two parent elements so if i save you can see i'm getting user is logged in because the user is logged in but uh, if i just add a uh, exclamation sign here which will convert it to the false then you can see i'm getting the sign in button which means this is working now instead of just uh, uh, simply rendering user is logged in we have to create the uh, user navigation right here so remove that and instead of that add another empty element or empty component and the first thing we want is a link which will be a notification button so add that and uh, into just add this tool that will be dashboard slash notification of course we don't have this rule right now but we will create it later so you can give it and inside this we will create a button which will contain uh, the bell icon so give this a class name the class name would be fit 12 and type 12 so it will be a perfect square set it strongly full so it will have a 100 percent roundness and change its background to bg gray and set its position to relative let me enable word wrap yeah and after the relative add a hover state to it so say hover column say bg black with a 10 percent of opacity so if you want to add opacity to the color just add this slash and then the 10 or the number of opacity so you can see i'm getting this uh, grayish button over here and when i'm hovering it is turning into a black color with a 10 percent of opacity great now we need a icon so for that just go to flat icon and here i can search for bell and let's get the bell icon this one just copy this and inside the button paste it change the class to class name and we will see a bell icon over here now let's change its text size because it's too small so change it to 2 excel and set its uh, display to block with a margin top of one so it will be perfect in the center as you can see our notification button is done now after the notification button we will have a user profile button where the user can click to see the navigation options like profile dashboard settings or logout option so for that make a div and uh, inside this div first of all give its class to relative and then just inside this div add a button and this button will contain the image of the user so add a class name here with 12 and type 12 with a margin top of one and inside of it render an image and in the image just in the source provide the profile image which we are getting from this user auth you can see i have the structure is profile image so i can just give that location inside the source and it will render the image now after that add a class name 
say it's width to be full and a height to be full set its object z cover so this will cover the whole uh, space without uh, breaking the portions of the image and changes roundness to full so if i save you can see the profile image over here i can refresh you can see this right here now let me first just clear my session so that i can see whether or not it's the condition is working so let me just clear it and now if i refresh you can see since the user is not in session i'm getting the sign in if i click on sign in and if then i go to sign in let me sign in okay it is saying incorrect password now you can see i'm getting this user profile icon again which means this is pretty much work now let's make a user panel and let's render that here so to create a user panel we will create it inside another separate file and that will be a user navigation component.css so you can find this inside this component folder and this will contain the user navigation panel so inside of it make a const or a functional component so add a const and let's call it user navigation panel and inside of it we will return for now an h1 saying user navigation panel and make sure you export the user navigation panel as a default great so if I save it, of course I won't see anything. So to see something, I have to first import it inside this network component and then render it. So I can just say a uh, user navigation panel and this will import it also in the top. You can see. So now if I save, you should see user navigation panel text over here, which means the component is working. Now we have to create the component, right? So let's go here and instead of rendering simple H1, let's render the navigation panel. So to create that, first of all, make an animation wrapper because we will wrap our whole component inside an animation wrapper so that we can add animation to it. And this animation will uh, have a transition. Remember, this animation wrapper has this transition prop that we can provide if we want to change its default transition value. And that's what I'm using right now to change the transition for this user navigation panel. So let's change its transition and uh, let's uh, set its duration to 0 0.2 and change its Y duration to 0 0.1. So it will have a different duration for the y-axis and the different duration for the whole animation but i believe uh, there is no y here well since uh, we don't have any y-axis animation there is no need to give this y duration so just remove it and just change the duration to 0 0.2 great right. now after that we need some classes for animation wrapper as well but we will add it later on so inside of it just make a dev and this dev will be our user navigation panel which will contain all the links so inside of this you can give a class name you can say a beige white color uh, and that will be absolute and uh, it will be right zero and give it a border the border color will be gray border gray and set it switch to 60 let me enable my word wrap again yep the width would be 60 and let me change its overflow to be hidden so anything will overflow it will be hidden and add a duration of it to 200 so there will be a transition to this with a uh, 200 milliseconds inside this div you can add a multiple link the first link i will add here is the right link and as you can see in the small screen i don't have any option to just write so we will show these right link in the user navigation panel in small screen but we will hide that right uh, link in the medium or larger screen so make sure you first import this link so import link 
once we have talked about home and here you can give mg2 the route and the route is editor of course we don't have the editor route now but just add it we will add of course this route later uh, give this a class name let's call it flex and add a gap of two change the uh, also give it a class of link and this link is again a custom CSS class added in, in, in next.css so that you don't have to write all the link styles and uh, i will just add on the medium screen just add a hidden class so whenever the website reaches medium screen or over the medium size it will be hidden and just add a padding left to eight with a padding by of four so it will have four padding from top and bottom and eight padding from left and inside it i will just render the uh, right icon so instead of writing that icon again let me just go and copy the link from here yeah just copy this and uh, let's paste it right here make sure this is correct let me indent it properly and yeah. now if i save you can see there is a right option don't worry about the positioning of the user icon and the panel we will fix it later while when we will give classes to this animation wrapper but right now you can see the panel is doing good we have this right button now after that we need a link and the second link will be a profile link to access user profile so i will add another link element and the two will be this inside it we will write a javascript we will write javascript to create this link dynamic so to do that add this template literal you can find this key above your tab key this is not a single code this is a, a, a template literals in javascript that you can uh, use to combine the string with a variable so i will say the root will be slash user slash and then i need the username variable the username of the user so to access variable inside the string inside your template literals you can say dollar and then curly brackets and inside the curly bracket you can pass the variable name and the variable is username of course this will give me a red error because i don't have any username variable right now but uh, from where i will get it i will get this username from the user auth state which is coming from user context right so in order to access this username i have to first import the user context and then i have to destructure it to get this username so for that add a const here and of course we will destructure it later so that equals to choose context and what context we need we need user context and make sure you import the user context as well now what i want is only username from the user auth so i can say user auth and i can destructure the user auth again to just retrieve the username from it so just save it and now it won't give me error and if i just inside it type profile and save you will see a profile link right here as you can see if i click here it will take me to the slash user slash username of course we don't have that route that's why it is not rendering anything so just come back and let's style this link a little bit so just give it a class name and say link and give it a padding left of eight and padding by of four and this will look like this great right. Now just copy it again and paste it below the second link will be for the dashboard so change the two to dashboard slash blog and save it so you will see a dashboard link as well copy this and paste it again and the third link we want is settings link change the two to slash settings slash edit profile and you will see that we have this profile dashboard and settings link now before creating the logout button uh, let's place this uh, user navigation panel directly in its position so that we can see that yeah it is working so for that what we will do is we will give some classes to this animation wrapper and again if you go to this animation wrapper you will see i have provided this class name prop to it 
which we can use to provide additional classes to this motion there to style this motion with right so i will use that top here so add a class name and what class name we will provide well we will uh, give it an absolute position and set its right to zero so it will stick to the right and change its z index to z50 so it will stay over everything and once done you can see that this user navigation panel is not affecting our user image or these buttons it is just coming above all of them great so now let's create the sign out button and then we will uh, work on anything else so for that let's first add a span after this link and this span will be a simple border add a class name to it set its class name to absolute and give it a border top and change the border to border gray and give it a margin left of negative six with a width of 200 percent and since we have it's with 200 percent that's the reason and uh, i have given here overflow hidden to the parent component so that it won't show the span the span element so add with 200 percent part of it and save it and you will see there is a span over here the overflow is not working let's see why it's not working let's just change its surface to 100 percent and just change the uh, margin left to six and let's see whether it's working or not actually let's just remove the margin left also and just change it to 200 percent and yeah i am having the span here so i just remove this overflow hidden we don't need it since it's not working also so just change this span to 100 percent and it will work after that we need a button for our sign out still for that add a button and inside this i will add an h1 and this h1 will just simply say sign out and after that i will have a key element or component which will be the username of the user so inside of it i can add a username again this username is a variable coming out of from this user op state so if i just save you will see sign out and the username like this now let's just style it so first of all give some styles to the button so add a class name the classes will be text left so all the text will go on the left side the padding will be four from all four directions when we hover over the button we will change its background to gray and set its width to four give it a padding of eight from left and set its padding y to four so it will have a four padding from left and right like this and now let's style the h1 so we add a class name say it's class to font bold change the text to text excel so it will be much uh, bigger and change the uh, and set the margin bottom to one to have some bottom margin and give a class name to this paragraph say just text dot gray and this will look something like this great so our sign out is well is done our user navigation ui is done now let's just sign out the user when we will click on the sign out button so to do that what i will do is i will add a on click to this button and when we click on this button i will just call sign out user and just copy this and let's create this sign out function here so create that once we will call this function inside this function first of all we will clear the session and to remove everything from the session of course we have a function in our session.jsx which is remove from a uh, remove from session and inside here i can just say user so the remove from session will just remove user from the session and once it's get removed from the session what we will do is we will reset uh, the user pod state to do that i have to import that state or the set user of state first so say set user of and this will import the set functionality of it and just add that here and what we will set is we will set it an object with an access token of null basically we are setting it to default value 
which is access to one node. So if I click on sign out, this should uh, reset the uh, user auth state and I should not see the profile image here, but instead I should see the sign in button. Let's see if that's working or not. So if I click on sign out, you can see that's on and I'm just simply seeing this sign in option, which means our sign out is working. If I again sign in with my credentials, I should see the profile image. Yeah. And if I click on sign out, it's gone. Let me again sign in and uh, then we will work on show and hide feature of it. So now, so now you can see the user navigation sign out is working and these are all just links that we will redirect that uh, will redirect the user to some route. So these are of course working. Now we just have to show or hide this user navigation panel when we will click on this user icon. To do that, just go to map bar and we will create a state here and we will call it a uh, user navigation state and this state will uh, contain the value again uh, just like the search box visibility state we had this state will contain either true or false and on the basis of that we will toggle the show or hide of this user navigation so let's call this user nav panel and set user nav panel just set it equals to true state and by default it will be false because we don't want to show the user navigation panel on start so since it's called we need to hide it and how can we do that we can just copy the state name and we can come here where we are rendering the user navigation panel and we can add a condition here inside the curly bracket saying if the user nav panel is true then only i want to render this user navigation panel component otherwise i don't want to render anything and if I save, you can see we are not getting the user navigation panel because the user nav panel state is false. But when it will be true, it will render this user navigation panel. So now I have to find a way to toggle this user nav panel. And the way we can do that is when we click on this image, we will just change the state to from false to true to back to the false. So to do that, what we can do is inside this image button. I can add a on click actually we will not add on click to button because there is uh, something else that i want to do so to achieve that instead of adding a on click to this button i will add on click to this whole div which is the parent of this button image and this user navigation time so just add your on click and when we will click on this tip what i will do is i will just say handle user nav panel something like that and i will just copy this class name and before they return i will create this function and this handle user map panel will just simply revert uh, or reverse the current state so inside of it just say set user nav panel and we will get the current value from it and we will just return the reverse of it so by adding exclamation we can change the form of false to true and true to false so if i just save it and click over here you can see i'm getting this user navigation panel if i click here it's on if i click again it is coming again and if i click it's gone so basically it's working but there is one issue and what that is when i click on it i am getting the user panel which is great but if I click outside of it, like I'm clicking on over the here or over the icon or anywhere, not uh, the image, then I won't be able to hide this user in a, in a part because uh, to change the state, I need to click over this image. So to uh, fix this, we can add a on blur event to this div where we have added this on click. So on blur is just that uh, when you uh, get out of focus. So when this tip will get out of focus, so if you click uh, outside of this tip, it will get out of focus. And in that case, we will just uh, toggle the user uh, nav panel state again. What, I, uh, what do I mean with that? Let's just go to this tip and uh, after on click, let's add on blur. And just on blur, uh, call handle blur function. 
just copy it and create a handle blur function save it and once the handle blur function call what we will do is we will again copy this set user panel here and we will basically set it to false we don't uh, care about the current value on out of focus we will just change it to false so that uh, when uh, the uh, parent div is getting out of focus we will hide the navigation panel so if i just save it if i click here and if i click outside of this div it means if i click on the nav bar you can see it's gone if i click here again and if i click on the center of the page it's gone if i click even though if i click on the image it will still go so this working but we will have another issue here that if i click over here and then click on profile this should redirect me to profile right but if i click here again you can see i am not redirected to profile because i'm still getting this nav bar so why is that why, uh, this is because when you uh, click on the profile this is basically getting out of focus uh, basically you are getting out of focus of the dev and that's why it is triggering this handle blur function and before even you can uh, get redirect it is changing the state so basically there is no link to redirect to so to achieve uh, the link what we can do is we can add some delay to it on blur so you can add a set timeout here of uh, 500 milliseconds or let's just say 200 milliseconds and after that you will change the user nav panel state so what it will do it will wait for 200 milliseconds and then it will hide it so if i click here and click on profile it will wait 200 milliseconds and in that 200 milliseconds i will get redirected and then it will just hide the user navigation panel so if i click here you can see now i am on user uh, profile if i go back if i click image or if i click and and if i click on the center of the page you can see after 200 milliseconds it's gone so basically our handle blur or user navigation panel is done and we are getting our links with the sign out feature so we are pretty much done with our navigation and now we have to work on google authentication so instead of just to sign in with these credentials our user can continue with google as well so let's do that Okay, to make the Google authentication in our project, we will need this Firebase service to uh, add Google authentication in our website. So make sure you go to this firebase.com and then if you don't have an account, just create one and then you will find this go to console option. Click that and it will open your console. And once you are in your Firebase console, you can see your previous joined projects and then just click on add project to create a new project here enter a project name and you can add any project name i'm saying branches or website yt let's just click continue and just disable this google analytic for this project because we don't need that click on create project and wait for some moment because it will take a lot of time to create a project once it's done it will give you a continue button just click on it and it will take you to your project console like this now to set up this firebase or to connect this firebase in our projects what we need is we need this web plugin so just click on this web icon and it will take you to the register web app so here you have to register your app or project for your web app so you can give any nickname here i'm still calling it react.js blog website it doesn't actually matter what you call it just click here and it will uh, register your app and once it's register your app it will give your uh, you a credential that you can use in order to connect with firebase it looks something like this with an import and firebase config all that just copy all of this code come back to your react project and open this uh, folder view and just go to common and inside that you will find a firebase.jsx file open that and paste all those code right here you can delete these comment lines and basically what it is doing it is uh, importing a uh, initial app from the firebase and this firebase is also uh, already installed in this project so you don't have to type npm install firebase in order to use this firebase 
then you have this firebase config which is uh, the credentials uh, for you to connect with your firebase project and then it's just initializing the firebase and storing it inside this app so now we have to uh, get the user authentication service from this firebase and to achieve that we have to import or actually enable uh, the google authentication service here so to do that just go to this build section and under that you will find authentication click there and it will take you to this page you have to click on get started in order to use or in order to use this authentication service now you can go here and say add new provider to create a new provider and the provider that we will use is google well you can create a facebook apple game center microsoft twitter anyone login right here from here but i am creating this google one just go over that and click on this enable to enable it here you have to select your email id to support the project and then you can click on save and it will take time some time and it will enable the google authentication for your project so once it is done now you can use this google authentication provider service from firebase so once it's done just come back to the react project and let's uh, type some code over here in order to create the google authentication so first of all let me go to my sign in page so let me click sign in and create i am just i am on this continue google so let's add a google auth here so let me add a google auth comment and then we can type it so first of all we need to define the provider so make a const variable and let's call it provider and this provider which basically will be a google auth provider so we have to say new and then the google auth provider that firebase providers so firebase provides this google auth provider to us that we need in order to create this provider now you also have to import that otherwise it won't work so say import and then here say google auth provider from firebase and in this case instead of uh, importing the uh, function from app we will import it from auth so in firebase slash auth we will have a google auth provider because we are uh, using the google auth in this project and then we will create const auth equal get auth and we will just call this function to create the authentication flow and basically once you create this get auth make sure you also import it over here and after that you are pretty much done you have set up your provider you have set up your auth flow now you just have to uh, set up your sign in with google method so for that we will create an external function here which uh, we will create a function here that we will import in our form or user auth page component uh, component and there we will call that function in order to run our google authentication what do i mean by that just make a function let's call it auth with google this is a custom function that i am creating so you don't have to import it from anywhere so this function will be a asynchronous function because this function basically or will call the firebase google authentication function so here first of all say let user equal null because what it will do it will call this function this function will uh, set the user null and then it will call the google uh, authentication from the firebase and at the end it will return the user back to where it got called so first of all set its user to null and then just await for this method which is sign in with sign in with google actually sign in with pop-up yeah so sign in with pop-up will give you a pop-up window to sign in using google and by awaiting it the, what it will do it will wait for this promise to get resolved and once this promise gets resolved then it will go further and at the end we will just return the user so which will be the logged in user so here you have to provide the author authentication which is this get auth and then the provider and that provider is this google auth provider so make sure you provide the first which is the authentication get auth and the second is the provider which is the google auth provider once you provide this since this is a promise you can catch its result using dot then and once it's get inside this 10 it will give us the result from the login 
and I can just say set user equal result dot user so basically it gives you a lot of information about the user but from uh, the lot of information we are just interested in the users object which contains the email phone number full name and a uh, profile image uh, like the like that so just uh, store that inside this user variable so that we can export or uh, actually we can return this user to somewhere this uh, auth with google function get caught so at the end just to return this user great and since this is a then make sure to add a catch also to handle some errors so just say if we get any error console log that error like this so save it and you won't see anything because we haven't called this function so to in order to call this function from other files you have to export this so just add export uh, in front of this function and it will export this function great now let's uh, go to our user auth page which you will find under pages folder inside here what i will do is i will go to this google continue with google button which is this and i will add a on click here so first let me add or enable my wordpress now i can just add on click here which will say handle google auth and just copy this to create a google authentication so make const handle google auth and let's call this function so handle google auth is a function and inside this function we will call our auth with google function that we have created inside this firebase so first of all get this e which is the uh, event type and and by accessing the event we can just prevent the form from submission by saying e dot prevent default so once you click on continue with google it will prevent the form from submission and after that i can say auth with google and make sure this you import from firebase so this auth with google is again a function that we have created in the firebase so since it's an asynchronous function it will wait for this thing and once it's get done it will return us the user that we can catch by saying dot then either we can use dot then or else we can create this as an asynchronous and then we can await for the result for this and store it uh, to someone uh, some variable but right now i'm just using the dot then instead of asynchronous so once the google auth is done it will give us the user and i will just console.log the user to see whether or not we are getting the user and also add a catch block here saying if we get any error add a toast dot error which will alert the user that we are getting error so and we will just say trouble uh, login in through login trouble login to google and also return a console dot log with whatever error we are facing Great. so if i open my console and let me just change the website screen size okay so if i click on continue google it should uh, give me the google pop-up and then i should be able to see a user profile here so if i click on google you can see i'm getting something uh okay i'm get i'm on this google page where i have all of my emails logged in so let me log in quickly and once it's done you can see in the console let me increase the size of the console you can see i got access token and the display name and the email and all sort of data from the google authentication which means the user google login is done but uh, technically you can store this access token in your uh, session and then you can check whether or not it is a correct token or not but actually we are not doing it because if this is uh, only halfway through it because our google authentication is not completed yet uh, this is uh, giving us a user that is signed in but we need google authentication in our server as well so that once we get the access token from the user log uh, from the google auth in the front end we can send this access token to the server so that in the server the server uh, the google checks this access token and tell us that yeah it is a correct access token 
and once uh, we verify that access token from google that yeah this is uh, the correct access token then only we will uh, allow the user to log in otherwise you won't allow because you can uh, technically type anything inside the session and uh, inside the access token and you will uh, crack this so we have to uh, find a way to verify this access token right so we will create something in our backend too so the front end part is done now let's go to the backend and let's create a google auth root which will verify our uh, access token so go to the server right here and here after this sign in root i will create another root i'll say server dot post so whenever the server get a post request on so the slash google auth I will run a asynchronous function and that will be request and response yeah so this callback will be asynchronous because it will also make request to google server in order to verify that uh, access token to tell us that yeah it is a correct one or not so that's why it is a asynchronous function so basically this will accept uh, one access token from the request so i have to restructure only one thing which is access token equal request dot body like this and then i can call firebase functions in order to make request to the google to verify this so to do that first of all i have to connect my firebase here as well so import admin from firebase admin and also this firebase admin is installed in your node module so you don't have to worry about it what this admin is this uh, firebase admin is basically for server side so that you can use server side function in order to access firebase so we are getting this admin now we have to connect this admin with our uh, firebase project in order to make request uh, like we uh, did for the front end so to do that after this port you can say admin dot initialize app and inside this you can't provide the config details as we provided in the front end but instead you have to provide a json file here and that json file is a secret firebase credential file that you can find in your projects so let's see where from where you can download it so just go in your projects overview and on the right side you will find this uh, setting icon just click on it and just go to project settings this will take you to the project settings and then you can go to this service accounts tab and this is where from where you can download that secret JSON key. So once it's open, just click on generate new private key and it will generate a new private key for you to use it. And once it is download, just click on uh, your folder view and place the downloaded file inside this server folder so that you can use it. Now since we have the file we have to import that file here again so you can say import actually let me import it above so just say import and give a variable name let's say service account service account key and uh, from where we have to import we have to import it like this react .js, which is the project name and then it will end with a dot json because it's a json file okay and now in the initialize app you can just say credential and in the credential key you can pass admin dot credential dot cert and inside of it you can pass your json which is service account key and if you don't want to write this you can just come back and you can see that this is uh, the thing that i have wrote you can just copy and paste it exactly in the code and it will work so basically now our admin is connected to our firebase project so now we can easily make a request to the server great so uh, what i have to do is when we get a request to this google o google auth we will get the access token from the request body and then we will verify this google authentication uh, access token by uh, calling or making request to the firebase google so to do that first of all we have to say get auth and this get auth will get the authentication from the firebase so import the get auth here from 
Firebase slash admin, uh, Firebase admin slash auth. So this will import this get auth function from this Firebase admin. And now you can use this get auth function in order to get the authentication provider and uh, verify the token. So to verify the token, uh, you have to say dot verify ID token. And basically this get auth is a promise. So that's why you can use dot verify ID token. And inside of it, uh, just call this function and you have to provide access token to it. So what it will do, it will pass this access token inside this verify ID token and this verify ID token will verify that yes, either uh, this access token is correct to Google authentication uh, token or not. If it is correct, then we can cache that result inside this dot then. And I can just add a asynchronous callback here because we have to uh, store the data inside our database in order to create a new user because the user is just logged in we have to store that user info in our database right so we will need some sort of timing there so that's why i'm using asynchronous here so i will just say decoded token or decoded user basically what it's do is if the access token is valid it will provide me the user of that token and since I got the user, I can just uh, store that inside our database and I can pass what the uh, necessary fields I have to give in a front end and then I can store it in the session uh, just the same way I, uh, we did for the signing and sign. So here, let's uh, destructure the decoded user, which is decoded user, which is the user object. So what we need, we need email, name, and picture from it. We need email, name, and picture from the user's uh, object. Other than that, we don't need anything else. So the way uh, the data we get from the decoded user in the picture, you uh, in picture you get the URL of the user's profile icon, but you get a very small uh, resolution of that and to create it in the high resolution well i found uh, this thing in the uh, stack overflow that you can do to get the high quality of the image from the google so what you can do is you can say picture equal which will at the uh, assign the value to this variable and what i will do is i will just call this picture and then replace so i want to replace something from this picture and that is s 96-c well s 96-c is the small resolution of the image and i want to replace that uh, from the url to s 384-c make sure the number is correct because this is a google number we can't do anything here so if it is if you type 334 and 344 it won't work it should be 384-c and that will give you a high resolution of the logged in user now uh, we have to create this user in our database and to do that we have to first find that uh, whether or not this user uh, exists in our database so what i will do is uh, we will check first that uh, we have a user in database or not if we have a user in database we will just log in the user but if we don't have a user in database we will create a user in our database and then we will pass the formatted data to the uh, front end in order to proceed with the uh, login authentication so for that, just add a variable, say let user equal and since I have asynchronous here, I can wait here and I will say user dot find one and this will find the user. So I will say find one and the condition I will say here is I will check for the email, right? So I will say personal underscore info dot email should be equals to email. So if there is any document with this email, just give me that and from there I want to select some string uh, some fields and what fields I want to select is a personal info dot full name because I am uh, selecting it from uh, the document because uh, in the front end I need full name email uh, uh, the full name username profile image those three things so I have to do that so copy this and inside this double quotes make sure you don't go out of it 
add a space to uh, add another field and you can add it like this let me enable my word wrap so that you can see it clearly well this dot select will let you select the fields from the uh, document and you have to provide the field name here in order to select it and with a space you can separate the fields inside this quotes so the second thing we need is username and the third thing is we need is personal underscore uh, info dot uh, profile image and the fourth thing we need is google Auth. well if you don't know what google Auth field is just go to user.js uh, which is the schema and we will find that there is a google Auth which is default is false so this google Auth will contain the information whether or not this log uh, this email is logged in through google because if this email is logged in through google then we will not have this password and since we don't have this password we won't be able to log in through a simple login form we have to use the google authentication in that case in order to give access uh, to a user and to be able to log in so that's why i'm just importing this google Auth. great now once you select that you have to call dot then in order to catch the document and the document that i get i will rename it as you and i will just say return you or null so basically if there is any document in the database with this email it will uh, give me back an object with full name username profile image and a google auth but if there is no uh, document with this email it will just uh, set this user equals to null so that i can on the next line check whether or not the user is null if the user is null i will create it in the database great so now i can say if there is a user which means we already have this user in a database well before doing that make sure you add a catch block to this thing as well to handle error so if we get any error we will just return response dot status and the status code will be 500 500 which is internal server error and we will just send a json saying we got an error and the error will be error dot message great so again coming back to this condition if we have a user which means we have to log in the user not store the user so in that case we will check whether or not we have a google auth true for this uh, user because if there is a password we won't let the user to log in through google we will say the user to use the form in order to log in so i will say if google underscore auth and you can't access google auth like this you have to call user dot google auth because the google auth is inside this user so just say user dot google auth and if there is a google auth which will be of course true well i uh, have to say it that add an exclamation so if the google auth is true then it will become false and if the google auth is false then it will become true which means if i create a user uh, if i uh, create or sign up with my email and then i will try to continue with that same email uh, through google authentication then i won't let the user to log in through that because uh, the user already have uh, his account created using the sign up i hope you get that right it is a little bit complicated uh, complicated but if you don't get it don't worry you can comment down below and i will clear your all out so don't worry about that uh, so yeah if uh, the user google auth is false basically uh, we don't want the user to get login in that case i will just return a response with a status code of 403 which is a invalidation code and i will uh, send a chase on with an error and the error will be this email was signed up without google please log in with password to access the account i hope this uh, line here tells you what exactly we are doing in this condition right so this is a part of like uh, what we have to do if we are logging in but uh, what if we are not logging in? in that case just add a else block and this is will be a sign up block so if the user is signing uh, or continuing with google for the first time in our website then we don't have 
we won't be able to retrieve it from the database because it won't be in our database so we have to store it in our database file so in the else block we will store it so we will generate our username first so select username equal and here i will wait for the username so i will say await generate username and again this generate username is this function that will take the email and will retrieve give us the username so inside of here just pass the email which we are getting from this decoded user and it will generate the username so once we get the username i can say user equal new user and again this user is again this variable that was null before coming inside this condition but once it's get inside this condition we will reassign its value to this new user object which we will use to store it in the mongodb so what we need to store is personal info and in the personal info we will say the full name will be name because we don't get full name from the google we get name which is the full name for the user and then we will say email and we will say profile image to the picture so we will set the screen puts and also we will set the username of the user and then i can also set the google auth to true because since this is the we are creating this user through google authentication that's why i'm setting google auth so that the user can log in without uh, coming in this condition now just await and uh, say user dot save call this so this will save the user in the database and once the user is saved in we will uh, get the user back and what i will do is i will set the user equals to the user that we got from the database so basically what i'm doing is i am resetting this user again to have this new user object and why i am not uh, saying dot then and uh, returning the response here because if i do that i have to do the same inside this plugin and uh, this will be the repetition of course so if i don't want to do that i can just await here uh, to change this user variable and then at the end of this condition at the very end i can just return and also since uh, we are using dot then make sure to add a catch block add a error and if we get any error basically just return a response with a status of 500 internal server error and just in the json send error the error will be error dot message great so after that the if and else we are done so basically this if is simply stopping the user from logging in and this else is just registering the user in the database and resetting the user so at the end of these two conditions we are getting the user object inside this user so that we can access that user in order to send the response to the front end so what i will do is very at the end i will just say return if we come at this line just return a response with a status code of 200 which means everything is okay and in the json i will just say format data to send which is again the function that we have created right here which takes the user and create the access token here so that we can validate it afterwards uh, when we want to validate the request from the server so i can just pass the user here and since this user contain everything uh, uh, this user is a object is an object contain user data we won't find any issue so if i just save it this will work so we will test it but before testing it out make sure you add catch block for this then also so add dot catch at the end and again if we get any error i will just return a response with a status of 500 and the error will be fail to authent authenticate you with google try with some other google account so we are just saying if we got any error we will just say the user to uh, try with another account great so this is the google auth uh, route that will let you log in or sign up using google auth so now let's test it so if i go back to the react 
I have to make request to the Google Auth uh, root in order to make this work. And how I can do that? Instead of just console logging the user here, I can uh, use uh, or actually I can make request to the server. So let's do that first. So here we have to first define our server root because we will use this user of to server uh, function again to make request to the server and this will take two things first is server root and second is form data so we need to create that so uh, let's say here let server root equal the root will be google auth and now we have to make a form data so i will say let form data equal and this form data will contain access token you can uh, go back to here and you can see i'm destructuring this access token from the request body right so we have to send this access token to the backend so just say aside this access token to user dot access token that we get from this user of uh, from uh, the user right so we have the server root, we have the form data. Now we just have to pass it inside this user auto server function, and that will just handle all the uh, login uh, thing because uh, that is also handling the login thing for the login and sign up root. So we don't have to worry about it. We just say user auth to server and just pass the server root and after comma uh, pass the form data. And if you say if we did have uh, everything uh, correctly if we done everything correctly i should be able to log in with google so if i click on continue google and if i log in with my account i should get redirected to the home page but uh, i didn't which means there is some error and uh, we get error saying error connected refused and then uh, we are getting in the 27th line that data is not the thing okay so maybe we get some error in the server let's see okay we are getting that needs an import assertion of type json yeah actually you can't export or actually you can't import the json file by just saying import name and from the json link you have to say here assert equal type json actually no need to say equal we have to say assert and then in the uh, curly brackets we have to say type json which will tell the node module uh, node chess that it's a json file that we are importing so actually give this inside quotes and now you can see i'm not getting any sort of error in my terminal yeah i am getting this uh, warning saying experimental warning that json module is exception experimental feature and it might change but it won't change for now so we can do this thing so just save it and come back and just refresh and now it should let me sign in with the google so if i click or log in with my google you can see now i am on the home page and i got something here if i click here i can go here and inside of it you can see my email uh, username so basically we are able to log in with the google error uh, in your side as well like uh, you are not getting the proper user image but instead this error so this is the reason uh, well actually i don't know what's the reason behind it but uh, uh, google has some sort of limitation uh, that uh, you can request the user's image only am uh, this amount of time or this amount like a thousand time or a ten thousand times after that it's just block you from getting the images so if we don't want to see this error instead of just saving the user profile in our database we can just don't provide it and then our mongodb will generate a dynamic profile image for the user so then we will not see that issue so if you are getting that just come your, uh, into your server and and inside this profile image picture just remove it so once if you not provide the profile image then this user will uh, if you come to this user schema you will see that the profile image has a default function which is just simply returning a custom image 
so if you don't provide it it will create uh, the image by default so if i just sign out and create my account using some other different account i won't see that error because it will generate a new image for it as you can see since i'm logged in now i'm not uh, getting that error because this is the image generated from the MongoDB and I'm not accessing any image uh, from the Google. Now, one more thing I have to do before wrapping up this video and that is I have to add one validation in this sign in route and that is that I don't want uh, the user to log in with the Google account because since I have logged in with the Google, I will not have a password and since I won't be won't have a password i won't be able to enter email and password in order to sign in so i have to check for that in the sign in route so that i can alert the user that this email was logged in using the google so please try logging in with google uh, so you don't have to provide the password or think that what is the password of it so to do that just go to the sign in route and then inside this dot then where we are checking for if the user is existing or not what you can do is after it you can say if user dot google auth which will return you that uh, user is a google auth authenticator or not so if this is false which means that yes we need the password in order to log in but if it is true then we don't need the password to log in right because then we uh, want the user to log in through google so in that case add exclamation so it will turn the false into true and just cut this whole code and paste it inside this condition so we will only check for password when the google auth is false for the user which means the user is not logged in with google uh, before but if the user is logged in with the same email with uh, google before then we will just in the else block return a response with a status of uh, 403 and i will just send a json with a error saying account was created using google try logging in with google so if i come back to the website and refresh well now if i try to uh, log in with my google account and since i don't have password i let me type any password that satisfy the condition and if i click on sign in you will see i got alert saying account was created using google so try logging it to google because this was created using google authentication but now if i try to access my account which is not created by google and enter the password and click sign in this will take me to the home page which is which means that our signing is working fine with this validation so that's it for today's guys i hope you like this video and learned a lot from this we learned how to make a login and sign up features in a website and also store the user in session using react context so if you have any doubt in any part of this video feel free to comment down below your question i will be glad to answer that so with that make sure you subscribe the channel to not miss the next part of it and keep learning thanks for watching